skirt I do not wish But do not cry See you looking at me hater Why you look so mad Pull off of the car lot Push button that hard top Las Vegas at the hard rock You can see the time on my smartwatch Bent out in the penthouse Still a player with the pent mouth Your girlfriend is my friend now And she loving it when we spin now Bonsoir à tous, bonsoir David bonsoir. et bienvenue ici au King Fat Stadium en direct d'Arabie Saoudite où va se disputer ce soir une rencontre de gala. That's right, we're in Riyadh here for a friendly match. Paris Saint-Germain taking on Riyadh season. King Fad Stadium here in Riyadh, around 60,000 expected in the stadium tonight. En effet, donc, on l'a dit, hein, un match de gala, ça commence à se remplir doucement, l'ambiance commence à monter, ils sont plus de 60 000 à être ce soir. Ils vont être présents dans le stade pour assister, donc, on l'a dit, à cette rencontre entre le Paris Saint-Germain et donc un mix, vraiment, l'équipe de légende, la Riyadh Season Team. David, ces deux équipes, donc, Al-Hilal et Al Nasser, yeah. il y a 12 joueurs d'un côté, 10 de l'autre, et ça va faire donc les meilleurs joueurs qui ont été retenus par le coach, pas des moindres, Galardo. David, qu'on connaît bien dans la, dans la capitale, et donc euh, bah, le Paris Saint-Germain de Christophe Galtier. Yeah, there's two teams that are a mix of Al Halal and Al Nasser that make up this Riyadh season team. I wanted to just give you a bit of information about the setting, about where we are. Now, we thought it would be warmer than what it is. It's a little bit cold, that's why we Mais, got these ouais, jackets vrai, on. On pourrait se dire en Arabie Saoudite, il fait chaud, et bah pas tant que ça dit, petit degré. Hein? Exactly, it's a little bit colder than we think it's a cold breeze coming in. And also, um, another thing that I'm really <laughs> noticing about the fans, football crazy as well, uh, every time we see one of the players, even the player's name up on the big screens here, the stadium erupts. So we are expecting a good atmosphere when the players finally do make their way out into the pitch. En effet, on renifle un peu, on tremblote, mais c'est normal, il fait frais ici dans la péninsule arabique. On, on pourrait penser hein, que ce soit hier au Qatar ou ce soir en Arabie Saoudite qui faisait chaud. L'atmosphère, elle, elle commence à exactly. monter. Voilà, mais, mais les températures, elle, elle diminue à mesure que les minutes passent. Et en effet, il fait qu'une petite dizaine de degrés. Alors, on va vous raconter un petit peu ce qui s'est passé. En images, vous avez vu, nous sommes passés donc eh bien, de Doha à Riyad, ici en Arabie Saoudite, le voyage, ça c'était aujourd'hui. Yeah. David, c'était une journée chargée en émotions hier. Les Parisiens sont allés à la rencontre des locaux, à la rencontre des supporters, ont signé des maillots. David, c'était une très belle journée qui s'est conclue par un entraînement ouvert au public. Ils étaient plus de 30 000 à assister à cet entraînement. Ça me rappelle le Japon. Yeah, yeah, it's very similar ouais. to Japan, those vibes. And actually, the mid-season vibe of this, it gives you a good feeling for the players as well to see that the fans are worldwide and they're cheering for them. Christophe Gauthier pointed that out last night as well, that it's nice for the fans, uh, it's nice for the players to get the encouragement from fans in all different corners of the world, not just in Paris and not just in Europe. So uh, last night, open training session, 25,000, ouais. 30,000 people came out in Qatar, and then this morning we made the trip to Riyadh, only a one hour, one and a half hour plane ride, uh, and we were greeted, lovely greeting when we got here as ouais, well. Yes, c'est vrai, mais, mais la popularité du Paris Saint-Germain dépasse au bien les frontières de l'Hexagone quand on voit David, c'est vrai, ça me rappelait la tournée évidemment asiatique, mais on peut parler de tout évidemment que c'était le cas euh, quand on était euh, aussi à Tel Aviv en Israël, mais ici eh bien c'est pareil, au Qatar, on a vu devant l'hôtel et puis alors là, quand nous sommes arrivés, nous avons été accueillis d'une manière magnifique sur le tarmac de l'aéroport yeah. saoudien, de la musique, des couronnes de fleurs des bouquets remis aux joueurs, euh, quel accueil franchement, merci vraiment pour l'hospitalité. Yeah, definitely, a big big thank you to Saudi Arabia for the welcome that we got when we landed mm. I had my headphones in, I thought it was my music, but it wasn't. As soon as we stepped off the plane, we saw <laughs> that there were, there were drummers there. Uh, we got uh, a bouquet ouais. of flowers. We also got a ring of flowers around our neck. So it was a super warm welcome. Um, and now we're expecting again just a nice, nice atmosphere for the players when they come out. Even as I said, if a messy jersey shows up on the, on the big screen, the stadium erupts. Alors, dans quelques instants, normalement, on devrait découvrir des ce qu'on nous fait ici, on vous le dira le 11 de départ du Paris Saint-Germain. Mais évidemment qu'on a envie de parler de trois joueurs qui ont été emmenés donc, par Christophe Galtier, à David, et qui sont dans une forme étincelante. Déjà, il faut le signaler, ils sont au retour de la Coupe du Monde, les trois. Donc la MNM, évidemment, je parle d'eux parce que quand on est entré dans le stade tout à l'heure, avec David, on a commencé à entendre « Mais si yeah. Mais si !» Mais c'est incroyable C'était yeah, pareil au Qatar hier à Doha, mais c'est exceptionnel. C'est-à-dire que tout le monde ne parle que d'eux. Et quand on voit leurs stats, David de Mbappé, 
de Neymar et de Messi, eh ben, ça se justifie. Oui, nous devons regarder le trio M&M. Ce trio est, nous pensons, de se rendre plus près, de se rendre plus près après ce match de la Coupe du Monde. Même uh, Gauthier a dit qu'il y a deux mois qu'il a eu presque une équipe. Donc ces joueurs, ce trip va leur donner encore plus de chance de se lier à trouver cette forme qu'ils avaient pré-World Cup. Et nous parlons des stats qu'ils ont eu jusqu'à la fin de la saison. Bien sûr, Kylian Mbappé, Ligue 1 top goal scorer. Top goal scorer de la Champions League. Uh, World Cup top goal scorer. He scored 20 goals and given five assists thus far this season. And then Neymar Jr., 15 goals, 13 assists. And lastly, Leo Messi, 15 goals, 14 assists. So they are ripping it up. Bah, les stats que vous voyez, c'est toute compétition confondue, mais même juste en Ligue 1, déjà, notre trio, il fait des ravages quand on voit que Kylian Mbappé donc, euh, et, euh, et bah, Kylian Mbappé et Neymar Junior sont au sommet des meilleurs buteurs, que Neymar yeah. Junior et Léo Messi sont au sommet des meilleurs passeurs. Léo Messi, joueur le plus décisif de notre championnat. Messi, sacré en Coupe du Monde. Et Kylian Mbappé, comme le dit David, 20 buts et 5 passes décisives. Et forcément, on a envie de les revoir sur le terrain ensemble tous les trois. Au coup d'envoi, parce qu'on a pu les voir un petit peu, notamment lors du dernier match. Mais au coup d'envoi, ça fait quand même plus de deux mois, David. Il faut remonter avant la Coupe du Monde. Et c'est normal parce qu'ils sont revenus séparément. Messi, Messi et Kylian, eux, bah, ils ont fait la finale de Coupe du Monde. Donc ça reprend doucement. Et c'est aussi le but de ce genre de match, peaufiner la forme athlétique des uns et des autres. Oui, oui, c'est vrai. La forme qu'ils ont été dans a été incroyable. Et je suis sûr, je veux dire, même si je parle de la session d'entraînement de l'année dernière, quand ils ont scoré un goal, la whole crowd est wild. Donc j'espère que demain, nous pouvons voir qu'ils ont scoré quelques goals. Maintenant, comme vous le pointez, Uh, Mbappé, Neymar, top of Liga in terms of goals, and then you have Messi and Neymar on top of assists. That leads to the best attack in the league, 48 goals in the league thus far in Liga. Évidemment, le Paris Saint-Germain. D'ailleurs, on fait un petit détour pour ceux qui auraient manqué eh bien la, la reprise du Paris Saint-Germain. On vous rappelle sur tous les tableaux dans lesquels nous sommes engagés. Bon, trophée des champions, on l'avait déjà gagné. David, en Liga, nous avons toujours trois points d'avance sur l'Anse, donc nous sommes au sommet du classement. Pour ce qui est de la Coupe de France, nous allons disputer, notre, nous disputerons plus tard, mais on en reparlera tout à l'heure du calendrier, le 16e de finale, mais nous sommes qualifiés. Et enfin, en Ligue des Champions, bah, on, va, on se donnera rendez-vous pour affronter le Bayern eh bien, en, dans les phases finales de Ligue des Champions. Oui, je veux aussi parler un petit peu de la squad qui a été ici à Riyad. Quelques joueurs ont perdu, trois joueurs ont perdu, en fait, ont perdu. Verratti n'a pas perdu, Nordi Mukieli n'a pas perdu, et Luca Lavalle n'a pas perdu. Bien sûr, nous devons le pointer. Pablo Sarabia ouais. did make his transfer. He is now in England playing for Wolverhampton Wolves. En effet, quatre joueurs qui ne sont pas dans les rangs parisiens pour ce voyage ici dans la péninsule arabique. C'est vrai, Lucas Lavallée, Nordi Moutielé, Marco Verratti, qui ont été touchés tous. Donc, euh, ils disent que Jambier, c'est vrai, notamment pour Nordi Moutielé qui reste du côté de l'infirmerie. Euh, pour ce qui est, c'est vrai, de Pablo Sarabia, ça, ça a été officialisé. Il a donc été transféré officiellement du côté de la première ligue. Il traverse la Manche et rejoint. Wolverhampton, on lui souhaite beaucoup de courage avec les Wolves. C'est vrai qu'il y a un peu de musique, hein, yeah, yeah, yeah. l'ambiance commence à monter. On va tenter de ne pas trop vous le montrer et de rester calme comme l'équipe du Paris Saint-Germain. David a pointé également la présence des Titi parisiens. Yeah. Il y en a deux qui ont signé leur contrat pro il n'y a pas longtemps. Il y a Susti et Mankari, c'est leur premier voyage ici avec l'équipe pro. On les félicite. Ils rejoignent notamment dans les rangs Ismaël Garbi. El Shaddai, yeah. ça fait plaisir de les voir, euh, David. Oui, bien sûr. J'ai vu Ismaël Garbi score un très, très bon goal last night in the, uh, in the open training session. We were talking about the Letiti who have made the trip. Ayman Kari is here. Elias Husni is here. Just on the big screen behind us, I think they just showed Ronaldo. But we're talking about Letiti. It's more important. So look, these guys on their first trip, uh, for some of them, it's good to see them. And Christophe Gautier has pointed out he'd like to see more and more of them here to be amongst the world-class talent, to learn from them and to create that pathway into the first team. En effet, et à point up, on doit en pointer également aussi la présence de Warren Zahir Emery. Je n'ai pas dit, mais 16 ans, il a battu tous les records et il est devenu la semaine dernière le joueur le plus jeune de l'histoire du Paris Saint-Germain. David, au coup d'envoi d'un match. Et on voit les joueurs qui sortent. Hein. Yeah, that's right. Ouais. So Behind us just now on the pitch, Riyadh's season team has come out onto the pitch. Uh, basically on the big screen, that they've only showed Ronaldo thus far. But they also have some familiar names that you might know. Anderson Talika, Taliska is there. Um, a, few other, a few other players that you might have heard about in the past. Les joueurs donc, euh, du euh, donc, euh, Riyadh Team Season qui commencent à sortir. Donc David, dans quelques instants, on espère pouvoir euh, vous dire qu'ils composent le 11 de départ. Mais pour l'instant, j'ai pas vraiment de nouvelles euh, à ce sujet. Mais bon, on verra ce que fera Christophe Gatti dans quelques instants. Ça commence à sortir. On imagine que les Parisiens, eux aussi, ne vont pas tarder 
à rejoindre euh, David le rectangle vert. On peut parler de deux hommes que nous verrons ce soir. Cri euh, Cristiano Ronaldo, évidemment. Et Léo Messi, on découvre le vestiaire du Paris Saint-Germain avant ça, David. C'est l'occasion pour la toute première fois officiellement de vous dévoiler le nouveau maillot du Paris Saint-Germain, le maillot Force. David, on reconnaît les couleurs. La ville de Paris, les, un peu les rayons dorés. Hommage à la dame de fer, aux nuits parisiennes. Yeah. C'est le nouveau maillot du Paris Saint-Germain. I'm really happy with this kit. The fourth kit has dropped. That fourth collection is out. Black and gold. It's going to look class. And the players will be wearing it for the first time tonight. Make sure you jump online and get your own version of it. We saw them wearing the training kit last night, but this will be the first time that the players actually wear the kit. Et ça sort côté parisien, hein? On voit déjà les gardiens, évidemment, qui sont là. On va en parler parce que ça fait quand même, évidemment, parler écho ici, dans la péninsule arabique, mais aussi en Europe. Cristiano Ronaldo, Léo Messi, évidemment que le match ne tournera pas autour d'eux, mais ils ont le mérite d'être là, David. Ce soir, il faut le dire, sur le terrain, nous aurons pas moins de 12 ballons d'or ah. grâce à deux hommes, 1400 buts à eux deux en Incroyable. carrière. David, incroyable. Et Léo Messi, désormais un avantage. Une Coupe du Monde, désormais avec lui, dans ses bagages. So good, so good. 12 ballons d'or between the two players. I'm not sure we'll ever see anything like these two again. You just have to appreciate it. Messi has 40 club and international trophies over his career. Well, Ronaldo has 34. But like I said, it's not necessarily about comparing them. It's about appreciating their, their goatness, I would say. Alors, on regarde les joueurs un petit peu. Ça peut nous donner des indices sur la composition à ceux qui sont derrière. Mais j'ai l'impression qu'on ne l'aura pas avant la fin de la Mais quoi qu'il arrive, je vous invite à vous connecter sur les réseaux du Paris Saint-Germain. Prendre vos abonnements PSG Télé. Ou essayer d'aller, bien sûr, à Bean Sport. En tout cas, ils diffusent, ils co-diffusent ensemble ce match. Donc, n'hésitez pas à aller le voir et vous découvrirez un match de gala très, très attendu. David, ça se remplit derrière nous. Plus de 68 000 personnes au King Fat Stadium qui sont attendues. That's right, King Fat Stadium, 60 000 spectators expected. It's getting loud, the atmosphere is starting to rise. We expect a great match. Now I'm sure the, the, 11, the starting 11 will be out anytime soon and you guys can see that on your TVs at home. Uh, and then after that, we are back to Paris. In the upcoming week, of course, Exactement. Coupe de France. Exactement, il faut qu'on en parle parce que le but c'est aussi de se mettre en jambe. On a un calendrier très chargé qui nous attend. Et le calendrier, David, on le découvre ensemble. C'est vrai que, eh bien, en Ligue 1, prochain match, ce sera face à Reims. Yeah. Le match d'après, donc, Coupe de France. Donc, on l'a dit, face à Pays de Cassel pour les, pour, euh, donc, euh, les phases finales également. Ah. On sent que l'ambiance est le monde parce qu'on voit Messi et Neymar sur les écrans avec... Kylian, elle est belle cette image. Neymar, Messi, Kylian de ma pêche, Rafa Kibi. The players are making their way onto the pitch. We will leave it there. We will ouais. end this and we'll let you enjoy. We will see you next time. Très Ciao. bon match à vous. La Riyad Season Team face au Paris Saint-Germain. Ça commence maintenant. Ciao tout le monde. We are honored to participate à la unique Riyad Season Team. Paris Saint-Germain and let's not forget Akraf Hakimi as well who took Morocco to the semi-finals the first time that an African or Arab country has ever breached the quarter-finals and really it couldn't have gone much better in some senses for Paris Saint-Germain there is a cost to that their league form has uh, 
struggle to recover from that, but it's not surprising after the high of that mid-season World Cup. It's perhaps not surprising that it will take us a little bit of time just to get back into things. And uh, maybe this little trip here will help to relax them. A lot of the players have been saying how it's been nice to get away. They're, they're, they're relaxed. They've had a great time in Qatar next door. They had a training camp there. They did a lot of little commercial uh, visits as well. Uh, you know, glad handing the people, uh, bringing in new fans to Paris Saint-Germain. Although I'd imagine everybody in Qatar is probably a Paris Saint-Germain <laughs> supporter. And uh, now, this is a mouth-watering game against uh, Cristiano Ronaldo. It certainly is, and here are the PSG players warming up, and there's uh, Ronaldo. 36th time that Ronaldo and Messi come head-to-head. -head. And for Ronaldo, it was a bit more of a disappointing World Cup with Portugal going out. He did play uh, a lot of that match against Morocco, but as uh, you were saying, Morocco were brilliant. 11 uh, PSG players went to the World Cup after Presnel Kimpembe's unfortunate injury and they really saw the highs and the lows didn't they Marquinhos and Neymar were absolutely distraught about going out but there can only be one winner and that winner was Lionel Messi beating his teammate in the final what a final it was and uh, no doubt all of these fans would have watched this and they'll be uh, waiting to see both sides come out it's an unusual idea isn't it but an interesting one players they'll know very well from the Saudi league and the PSG stars coming uh, to visit the warm Middle East. It has been very, very cold in France, and, and uh, I saw an interview with Marquinhos saying they were happy just to get some warm weather. Yes, well, they uh, they had a training session that uh, fans were able to pay to come in and, and view their teams. There was a Zimbabwean fan who uh, was quoted as saying that uh, this is the only time he would actually get to see all of these wonderful players. He was actually working during the World Cup. He lives in Qatar, so wasn't able to go to any of the games. So he felt like at least he's managed to see them in the flesh. And that's the thing about this, isn't it? Is that seeing these huge stars in the flesh, it's, uh, there's nothing quite like it. Yeah, and uh, great anticipation in Riyadh. A city that uh, is now welcoming Cristiano Ronaldo. And obviously, they'll be hoping to boost the Saudi league and boost their status. Saudi Arabia interested in uh, hosting the 2030 World Cup along with Greece and Egypt. That's uh, a long way down the line, but here we see four players in one. Ronaldo smiling. He hasn't actually played an official game for his new club yet, so we can't expect him to be 100% match fit, but no doubt there'll be something special from him as the uh, Saudi officials get ready to welcome Cristiano Ronaldo taking on Lionel Messi. Smiles all around at the moment. Incidentally, the uh, home team, we can call them that, Riyadh will be coached by a uh, great player of the past, Marcelo Gallardo. Argentine fans will remember him. He's a super player at uh, River Plate and Monaco. He spent one season at PSG. Maybe it wasn't the best season for him. We'll talk about that uh, a little bit later. But a player, a coach that's uh, very familiar with European football and Cristiano Ronaldo will be playing for him today, who's wearing, of course, the number seven. He'll be captaining this team and Kylian Mbappe, who has played since the World Cup, took a bit of a break uh, after that World Cup. And Lionel Messi, kind of inverse, he took a break right after the World Cup and came back to play the last couple of games. Unfortunately, PSG for them coming off a disappointing defeat at Rennes. That was on Sunday. It was absolutely pouring down in uh, Brittany, in the west of France, as it often does in that part of the world. And such is the life of, of a modern footballer playing uh, against Rennes under the driving rain last weekend. Here they are in the desert. Oh, it's uh, quite nice conditions today. And then next week, they're going to play uh, at a club called Pays de Cassel. Now, if you haven't heard of Pays de Cassel, you can forgive yourself because they're a village team pretty much playing in the sixth tier of French football. They'll play that match at Lens. That's a, a French cup match. So, Angus, uh, what a, a strange week in a way for PSG. Um, topping and tailing with Ren and Pay de Gassel with a, a trip to Saudi Arabia in between. Yes, well, I mean, Paris Saint-Germain have uh, managed to get that uh, Coupe de France match uh, deferred until Monday to give themselves time to, to get back from this. And uh, in large part because... Uh, well, the Saudis obviously wanted to see the first team. They wanted to see the team that will likely take on Bayern Munich in not so many weeks' time now in the uh, knockout stages of the Champions League. Neymar, very much one of those, started off the season absolutely on fire. Has uh, just uh, lost a little bit of form, perhaps, uh, towards the end of the season. But then Paris Saint-Germain have lost their 
last couple of games as well. And um, I would imagine that uh, they'll be chomping at the bit to get back into competitive action when the the really important part of the season starts up. Let's not forget that Paris Saint-Germain, despite those two defeats, are still top of the table. And uh, that is they had a tremendous start to the season. And it's only because of Lance's record ever start in the uh, the championship that they're actually anywhere near them at the moment. But, uh, yeah, I think that uh, this will be a nice way to stretch out their legs. They've relaxed a bit. And uh, they've enjoyed the finer points, and uh, then it'll be back home and get on with the the winter season in France. Indeed, Kylian Mbappe, the uh, top scorer in the league. Now, talk a little bit about the week that PSG have had. Then they did train on Tuesday at the uh, Camp de Loges, then they flew to Qatar overnight. They had a training session in Qatar on Wednesday, including this man Sergio Ramos. That was at the uh, Khalifa Stadium, and then they flew. It's much uh, shorter journey, obviously, from Qatar to Riyadh good weather here in the training session and ready to play today and they will fly back to France immediately after this match so the players just uh, putting themselves through the paces it's going to be fascinating to see how Cristiano Ronaldo actually does because he hasn't played since that World Cup match he couldn't actually play because he's still uh, banned after an altercation with a fan in England and the English FA ban did uh, actually carry forward so unfortunately for him he hasn't been able to play but he will in uh, a few days make his debut Neymar another very very popular player around uh, these parts in the Middle East where often uh, fans they do get attached to particular players and Neymar hugely popular in Qatar and in the Middle East and he's come back from that World Cup disappointment, the defeat against Croatia. There's uh, Kylian Mbappe, who came on as a sub against uh, Rennes. Pretty difficult conditions, driving rain, wind in the west of France. Uh, very different conditions here. There are a couple of players who can't make it. Uh, Marco Verratti, who's just signed a new contract, incidentally. Uh, still has that injury. It's a quad problem. Nordi Mukiele picked up an injury against Rennes. He couldn't make the trip. Uh, Nuno Mendes still recovering from a thigh muscle injury. And Presnel Kimpembe not uh, able to make the trip either. He's got uh, a long-term injury as well. We wish him a speedy recovery. Uh, Renato Sanchez is back. He did play against Rennes for this match. Uh, pretty good conditions. About 12 degrees in the Saudi capital. Cristiano Ronaldo will be getting used to these uh, new conditions in his new home. What uh, an amazing career he's had, and we'll be comparing and looking at his career and Messi over the years. Let's start this uh, program by giving you some numbers. In the uh, all-time club ranks, Messi, and it's quite hard to even <laughs> comprehend these figures, 696 goals. Ronaldo, 701 goals. Champions League alone, 129 goals uh, for uh, Messi, 140 for Ronaldo. Uh, All-time list in uh, international football, 98 goals for Messi, 118 for Ronaldo, 12 Ballon d'Ors. Uh, it really is quite remarkable. Angus, do you think, are we in the near term, are we ever going to see players who can come up with these kind of figures? I mean... It's amazing to think that Messi, 696 goals uh, for his club, 98 for his country. Ronaldo, 701 for his club, 118 for Portugal. You really do blink when you see those figures. You're, you're talking about literally more than 1,300 goals in, club, in their club careers. And this is in a, an age of tactics and good defences and, and, and uh, clubs studying their opponents' uh, with great video analysis and so on. It's staggering for those two players to score so many goals. Oh, sorry. It's very interesting because uh, you can also compare them with what came before, is that people say that Ronaldo, uh, Cristiano Ronaldo and Lionel Messi are the greatest ever. But, of course, they play in an era where the uh, the best players, the strikers, the forwards, are protected a lot more than the, the strikers of years gone by. I mean, we lost Pelé uh, very recently, whom uh, Neymar equaled in terms of World Cup goals uh, in the uh, the last World Cup just gone by, even though they ended up going out against uh, Morocco in the process. 
and you've got the likes of uh, Diego Maradona. I mean, those two players had the lumps kicked out of them uh, in their careers, as well as the likes of Cristiano Ronaldo and Lionel Messi. They came into an era where it was a lot more protected, uh, thanks to Marco van Basten in primarily. But then you also have this idea of the fact that uh, the, the idea of um, studying opposition, the use of data analytics, was well, very much in its infancy when these two players came in in the beginning. And so now we've reached the maturity of that. So whether or not we will see those kinds of figures in the future is very much up for debate. I certainly believe that we will see players as great as them in the future. I think that that will always happen. I mean, the, the mere fact that you see somebody like Kylian Mbappe coming through uh, shows you that there will always be the prodigies that, uh, that come through. Kylian Mbappe is an interesting one for me, actually, because a lot of them you get compared with the greatest players of ever, maybe France, Platini and uh, Zidane. But I think the, the more pertinent um, analysis for him is more, I see uh, the old Ronaldo in him a lot more. That, that speed off the thought, that first touch, that ability to be able to just weave past players. And also an element of Thierry Henry as well that I see in him as well. Kylian Mbappe, I think, will prove to be one of the greatest players ever because of his first touch, his ability to run, as long as he's not injured. And this is also why we have to thank Marco Van Basten as well, because players like him are less likely to get injured because they're more protected. And he is such a nightmare, Andreas, for, uh, for defences, and particularly for goalkeepers, because I was watching a, a compilation of all of his Champions League goals, and you literally don't know where he's going to put the ball. He will go everywhere on the on the goal. The goalkeeper can protect his far post. He'll go to the uh, the near post. You protect the near post. He'll go to the far post. And then he'll strike it straight over the top of the goalkeeper at pace. He can head the ball as well. He can also create. We saw that particularly last season. Not so many this time for him. But the goals are coming back. So, uh, yeah, to answer your question is, I think that we will definitely see players as great as Messi and Neymar in the future, whether or not they can come up with as many goals, bearing in mind how much is put into now stopping these players is another matter. Indeed, always difficult to compare generations, but what we can say is we have four superstars on the pitch there and plenty of other good players, you know. We'll talk about other players from PSG and indeed uh, Al-Hilal and al Nasser once the match starts. These are the PSG players warming up, getting some shooting practice in. It's going to be interesting to see uh, who lines up. We'll bring you that lineup just as soon as we possibly can. Lionel Messi will definitely uh, take some part in this, and it's interesting what Angus was saying as uh, Kylian Mbappe just putting one wide for a change. He's already got 12 World Cup goals at 23 years old, so he's certainly got a couple of World Cups left in him. And then uh, he certainly raises his game for the World Cup. What a final that was. And everyone thought that France were out, produced some brilliant a hat trick and losing there's uh, not many players he's the only one who can say he scored a world cup hat trick world cup final hat trick and lost there's cristiano ronaldo what about his future uh, portugal have a new coach you know and roberto martinez who did visit uh, saudi arabia recently discussed the future of uh, ronaldo portugal playing qualifications for the next euros against uh, Liechtenstein and luxembourg in march no disrespect to those two countries, but it, it, they're two perhaps easier games. And it would be really interesting to see whether Ronaldo will perhaps bow out in those two games. Or will it be time for Portugal and Martinez, their Spanish coach, to turn the page. And uh, there is a great generation of young Portuguese players uh, coming through, including Vitinha, who we're hoping to see today. Fabulous player at PSG. Uh, this man on your screen also met Carlo Ancelotti, who was in Saudi Arabia in Riyadh for the uh, Super Cup with Real Madrid and uh, Rafael Leal who was here for the Italian Super Cup so it's actually uh, become quite a base for big games Riyad of late the Italian Super Cup uh, and the Spanish Super Cup both held here recently wins for Inter and Barcelona talking of Barcelona well this man faced Barcelona many times when he was at Real Madrid those uh, classicos over the years we saw so many of them it's the 36th time that uh, this man, Messi, has faced Ronaldo. Ten wins for Messi. Excuse me, 16 wins for Messi, ten for Ronaldo. They first played each other all the way back in April 2008. First leg of a Champions League semi-final. Remember that one? Ronaldo missed a penalty. Man United winning that 1-0, going on to lift the Champions League. Uh, the next year was uh, a real classic, a final between Messi and Ronaldo. 
when uh, Messi, we don't often say this, a wonderful header when he leapt between Vidic and uh, Rio Ferdinand. Remember that one, Angus, in a 2-0 win for Barcelona in 2009. Seems a long time ago. It was a long time ago. And uh, so many Classicos. Remember that 5-0 win for Barcelona in 2010, 2011. They met four times in three weeks. And after five uh, matches without beating Messi, this man, Ronaldo, finally got a win. That was in the Spanish Cup final. And Ronaldo leaving Spain in 2018 and Messi in 2021. I mean, it was that fantastic rivalry, wasn't it, in Spain? And they played each other so often. Uh, perhaps in an age when uh, the Liga was the biggest one in the world and uh, playing for two super clubs. They're still two big clubs. But when Ronaldo and Messi were in their pomp playing for Real Madrid and Barcelona, I guess they really were some wet matches, weren't they, between Barcelona and Real Madrid back in the day. And uh, some super clashes, and it's great to see them uh, back facing each other in rather different circumstances today. Uh, nice uh, there from Ronaldo, Jorge Campos, and uh, just of Galtier just uh, exchanging pleasantries there just before this game. It's uh, an interesting move for uh, Ronaldo, and uh, certainly going to raise the profile of uh, Saudi Arabian. Uh, football and this match against Paris Saint-Germain will in no small part do that as well. Indeed, there's uh, Kylian Mbappe and Lionel Messi warming up as the players just go back to the dressing room for the final tactical instructions from uh, Messrs Galtier and Gallardo. Our referee today incidentally is from Qatar, Abdul Rahman al Jassim. And the uh, stadium just filling up the uh, 68,000 stadium in the Saudi capital of Riyadh. You're watching pictures from the uh, King Fahd Stadium in the Saudi capital of Riyadh. We're just a few minutes away from uh, the Riyadh team, the Riyadh season team, up against Paris Saint-Germain in this high-profile exhibition match. Where we're waiting for uh, Cristiano Ronaldo to play for the first time for not exactly his new club, but in his new country, up against PSG. And these are four of the big players. They're no doubt the big stars here. Ronaldo, Messi, Mbappe and Neymar all on the pitch for the same time. Lots of other good players will be uh, on view tonight, but these certainly the ones getting all the headlines. ماني باللي يصفك كذا أبي تولعون الملعب خل بعض الناس يمكن يتحمسون انتوا فاهميني نبي تشجيع صح King Fahd Stadium filling up nicely 
ahead of the Riyadh team's match against Paris Saint-Germain. We're about 10 minutes away from kickoff. These fans clearly desperate to see some of the world stars of football in what's called the Pearl of Stadiums in the uh, Saudi capital. You may have seen earlier there was a huge umbrella that keeps the sun off seats. So today it doesn't really need to be used. It's about 11, 12 degrees. Not always uh, hot in this part of the world. It is, of course, the uh, middle of winter in this part of the world. A match that was due to be played a year ago, but because of COVID, it had to be delayed. So these fans have had a long wait to see PSG come to town. But we are ready. And uh, in about eight or nine minutes after the uh, pre-match formalities, we're going to get off with Riyadh against PSG. The Riyadh season team is made up of players from Al Nasser and Al Halal up against Paris Saint-Germain. The Riyadh season team will come on to the pitch in a few minutes. Fans, most of whom are probably big fans of either Al Nasser or Al Hilal, will put their rivalry to one side, no doubt. I'm hoping their team will play and beat Paris Saint-Germain, who brought a very strong team here. Apart from one or two injured players we were talking about, especially uh, Marco Verratti. We wish him a speedy recovery. And Nordi Mukieli not here, but apart from that, Pretty much a, a full strength team from the players available. An air of anticipation in the Saudi capital. And you can't blame them, can you? I mean, after the World Cup, they had beating Argentina in the first game. And OK, it didn't quite go the way they wanted to afterwards. But it was no doubt that that was the greatest moment in Saudi Arabia. In a single, Saudi Arabia before, in a single match. It wasn't quite the, the run to the last 16 that they enjoyed in 1994. But uh, nevertheless, it was still one of those great moments. And two of the best goals as well that we saw at the uh, World Cup as well came in that match. And uh, we'll see the, uh, the likes of quite a number of uh, those players from those two sides. The likes of... Abdullah Al-Amri and Abdullah Madu in the uh, side, uh, Abdullah Otaif, and of course the, uh, the number one man himself, Salam Al-Dasari of Al-Hilal, who scored that winning goal against Lionel Messi. It was interesting, I was going to say earlier to you, both sides that reached the final this time, both lost during the tournament. I can't remember when that actually happened, where both of the finalists both lost. Yeah, I remember Spain in 2010 losing, but you're right. For both to lose and get to the final, quite something. And you're absolutely right to talk about Salam al Dalsari, who scored a fabulous goal and a mythical goal in the history of Saudi football. And uh, you saw the reaction on social media to that goal. It really was quite something. And uh, I'm sure he'll play some part today. The uh, left winger, Salam al Dalsari, who plays for Al-Halal, who actually over the years have been the more successful of the two, Al-Halal, 18-time champions, and they've won the uh, King Cup nine times as well. Four times Asian Champions League winners. They're big hitters in uh, Asian football. al Nasser never won uh, the big one. They did get to the final once. And they didn't reach the, uh, the, the Asian Champions League this season either. They had a disappointing season before that. Um, we shouldn't forget, uh, though, uh, Salah al Shehi who uh, I don't think is in the squad tonight, uh, but he was the man who scored that equalising goal to Messi's penalty in that game. That was also a pretty quality goal as well. It just got overshadowed because it didn't turn out to be the most important goal, if you like, because of the winner that came after that from al Dasari. That's right, Saudi getting off to a winning start, but then losing their next two games, but certainly making lots of friends. They play some really good football as well in Qatar under Hervé Renard, a Frenchman himself, of course. There were 27,000, incidentally, just as a comparison, that turned up to that training session uh, in Qatar yesterday, I believe it was. Yeah, 27,000 for a training session is uh, really quite something. And, of course, it was a place that uh, Akraf Hakimi remembers well. It was where his uh, team uh, played the third-place playoff 
OK, they won't remember it with a particular uh, happiness because they lost no. against Croatia. But nevertheless, the fact that they came fourth in a World Cup is their best ever. Yeah, and we should talk about Hakimi because uh, it was very much an Arab World Cup as well. The Arab world very proud to host the World Cup for the first time. And Ashraf Hakimi is a hugely popular player, not just in Morocco, but across North Africa and Middle East. And what a player as well. He's uh, one of those all-action modern right-backs. He's uh, very strong physically, defensively, very solid, but a super attacking right-back as well. Let's hope we see a bit of Ashraf Hakimi today. I'm sure these fans will be really interested in seeing the Moroccan in action. And he's a great um, humanitarian off yes. the pitch as well. He's uh, very much has a social conscience. He doesn't, he doesn't, hasn't forgotten where he came from. And, uh, and, I, and I think maybe that's also why he's such great friends with uh, somebody like uh, Kylian Mbappe, because they, they, they share this. Uh, they come from, both come from relatively humble backgrounds, but have really made good. They've worked hard. He, uh, Akraf Hakim is always paying tribute to his parents about what they gave up so that he could play football. And he's very, very conscious of that. He's a, he's a real role model. Yeah, certainly is. And where he comes from, he actually comes from Madrid. His first language is Spanish, so he can get on uh, with a lot of the uh, PSG players and a real popular player in this part of the world. And, uh, of course, they're both similar generation as well. Uh, Hakimi and Mbappe, similar ages, and uh, they'll be playing together, no doubt against each other as well, international level over the years. Ashraf Hakimi, Hakimi 24 years old, just as uh, Kylian Mbappe is. Well, we're waiting for the teams to come out onto the pitch. Uh, seems to be a little bit of a delay, I think. We're blue to kick off at six. It's uh, at French time, that is. And uh, we're only a couple of minutes before that. It's almost just building up the anticipation. Yeah, it's eight o'clock uh, local time in Riyadh. Beyond imagination, as you can see. Let's hope there's some imaginative stuff. Yeah, let's hope pitch. we don't have to rely completely on imagination. <laughs> Let's talk about some uh, team news then, Angus. Up front, well, Messi, Neymar and Mbappe looks like they will start, so these fans going to get what they want. It looks like uh, Kayla Navas will start in goal. He hasn't played too much this season, only in uh, cup competition. Looks like we've got a back four of Bernat, Ramos, Marquinhos and Hakimi, so it's pretty much a first choice back four. Solao, Ruiz, the two newish signings, along with Renato Sanchez, another new signing in midfield. Let's uh, hand over to the MC. فترة رائعة جدا وأصبحت وجهة مفضلة لأهم الأحداث الرياضية نحن وإياكم في هذه الصورة مع معالي المستشار تركي آل الشيخ مع رئيس أيضا نادي باريس سان جيرمان ناصر الخليفي الحاضرين في هذه المباراة الكبيرة بطبيعة الحال من أجل أن نشاهد وإياكم حدثا فريدا للغاية ويوما كبيرا للغاية نجوم النصر والهلال أمام نجوم باريس سان جيرمان في هذه الأمسية الكروية الكبيرة التي نأمل أن تشهد حدثا أو مباراة ممتعة وبالتأكيد كل الأنظار على أبرز Well there's Cristiano Ronaldo saying uh, hello to some friends and foes alike but it's all very friendly especially Sergio Ramos how many times did those two line up for Real Madrid and it's good to see Ronaldo back looks happy looks eager to go as we get ready for the Riyadh season team against Paris Saint-Germain in Riyadh كريستيانو رونالدو الذي يقود فريق نجوم النصر والهلال أمام ليونيل ميسي الذي يقود هجوم باريس سان جيرمان كل شيء أصبح جاهزا لأن نستمتع وإياكم بليلة كروية أشبه ما تكون بالحلم مع نجوم النصر والهلال ضد نجوم بي اس جي في هذه الأمسية الكبيرة على كأس موسم الرياض في هذه الليلة الاحتفائية العالمية المثيرة والوجه الجديدة لكرة القدم وأيضا للعديد من الأنشطة الترفيهية سياحية ثقافية رياضية على أرض الرياض في موسم الرياض وعلى كأس موسم الرياض يأتي هنا طاقم تحكيم قطري لإدارة المباراة الكبيرة بين نجوم النصر والهلال أمام بي اس جي 
في قلب العاصمة الرياض هنا في استاد الملك فهد الدولي في حدث فريد من نوعه وفي ليلة أشبه بالحشفة ما تكون بالحلم ليلة عالمية بقيادة We are ready to go at the King Fahd Stadium as Cristiano Ronaldo leads the Riyadh season team up against Paris Saint-Germain. Marquinhos, of course, the captain for PSG tonight, but all eyes on this man as well, Lionel Messi, who is facing his old rival for the 36th and perhaps the last time. Neymar, also a big attraction in this part of the world, as is, of course, Kylian Mbappe. 12 World Cup goals he scored in his career. And reputation getting bigger and bigger by the year. This is the Saudi capital with the stadium in lights. We're seeing Nasser El Halafi, the PSG president, a long time, uh, alongside rather his excellency Turki Al El Sheikh, who is the chairman of the General Authority of Entertainment in Saudi Arabia. And there is Cristiano Ronaldo, ready to lead his teammates for what should be uh, an entertaining night in Saudi Arabia. Nasser Al Halafi. The Qatari, of course, who's run PSG for more than a decade and was in his home country yesterday. And Cristiano Ronaldo, at 37 years old, a new chapter in his career. To the pre match formalities. Nasser Al Halafi will know these players very well indeed. No need for introductions. Well, whatever the language, the players are recognisable and it's fantastic to hear the MC introduce those players and a great reception for all of the 22 starters and I think we'll have lots of substitutes as well so we will see the full array of PSG players and those who represent the Riyadh team as well. Well, the party is starting in Riyadh. Nasser Al Halafi, a familiar figure, of course, to all PSG fans, has met the home team, the Riyadh team, and his PSG team as well as we get ready to start this match. An exhibition game. It's a game that should have been played a year ago. And uh, we're ready to go now. Sergio Ramos and Cristiano Ronaldo still on very good terms. 
as are all of the team. I think this match will be played in a, a really good spirit. Looking forward to that as the PSG team here getting some warmer weather. It's not that warm here, actually. It's 12 degrees, but it's uh, much warmer than back home before they fly back to Paris after this match. The match uh, going to be played in front of pretty much a full house, as you can see. It's about 66,000 fans at the Kil Al King Al Fad Stadium. Wonderful arena. Let's look at the teams then, starting with PSG. It's pretty much the first choice team. Kayla Navas hasn't seen too much action today, but he will start between the sticks. And up front, it's the magic three of Mbappe, Neymar, and Messi. That's how PSG line up today. Our referee is from Qatar. Abdul Rahman Al Jassim, he's 35 years old. World Cup referee. He actually ref two games in Qatar: USA against Wales and Croatia against Morocco. But what about the uh, home team, the Riyadh team, led of course by Cristiano Ronaldo, the number seven? It's made up of uh, players from both teams: Al Hilal, Al, -Al Nasser. Look out too for Anderson Taliska. Uh, Brazilian star who will be hoping to link up with Ronaldo and score a goal or two tonight. Ronaldo against Messi for the first time since December 2020 when they faced each other at the new Camp in Barcelona. The stage is different but two great players and there's plenty of others including this man Neymar Mbappe on the pitch as well as PSG bring their stars to Riyadh. It's the Riyadh season team against Paris Saint-Germain. We are underway with PSG kicking from left to right in the dark strip. 1,397 club goals, 216 international goals, 12 Ballon d'Ors. That's the combined record of Lionel Messi and Cristiano Ronaldo as they face off today at the King Fahd Stadium with the PSG kicking from left to right with pretty much a first choice team of those uh, available, not injured. So it'll be fascinating to see how they get on up against the combined team of uh, Al Halal uh, Al Nasser. It's a first touch for Juan Bernat to his Spanish countryman Ramos. And Austin, so it looks like uh, the Riyadh team will be trying to win the ball high up the pitch. Messi, first touch for the Argentine World Cup winner. Plenty of fans he has in this part of the world as well. Kylian Mbappe, first touch for the Frenchman. Looks like he'll be playing... Uh, on the left with Neymar a little bit more central. 4-3-3. PSG have lined up with three at the back quite often of late with uh, Danilo as the uh, third centre-back. But Danilo's on the bench, so it looks like we'll have a more orthodox 4-3-3 with uh, Sanchez, Ruiz and Soler in the middle of the park. First attacking intent then for Neymar. Messi, a couple of players around him, including uh, Gustavo. He's a very familiar player, vastly experienced player. Uh, played against PSG while at Marseille. He played at Hoffenheim and uh, Bayern Munich. It's one of the big, big names in this Riyadh side. Seeing that, the first touch there from Messi. And uh, Ramos putting out the fire early on. It's just minutes to play, plenty of attacking intent. Just a couple of players really uh, playing who played for Saudi Arabia in the uh, the World Cup. You've got uh, Sultan al Ghanam, the right back, who's playing. Ali al Balahi as well. He's uh, playing as well at centre of defence. And uh, no uh, Salam al Dasari, the man who scored the winner against um, uh, Argentina, Argentina yep. in that game. He's on the bench, it seems, at the moment to start with. First chance to be created for Riyad. Cut out by uh, Renato Sanchez. Doing his job. Neymar. Little run from Lionel Messi. Is this going to be the first chance? And it's going to be the first goal within three minutes. 
the two stars linking up as they have over the years. It was a clever through ball from Neymar and Lionel Messi did the rest. The celebrations start early, especially for those supporting PSG. Disappointment for Ronaldo and Riyad. Alois was beaten. And, well, a typical link-up between those two stars, and it's 1-0. Well, we can expect a few goals uh, coming up today, and, uh, well, you can see one of the reasons why Neymar and Bappe and uh, Messi have been so devastating in Liga and the Champions League this season. That's a classic ball. You can see Neymar's been doing that all through the season so far. And uh, Lionel Messi, who struggled for goals last season, has been catching up this time around. He's capped on his creative elements as well, and that's a great finish. And uh, he beats again the team, the player he beat with a penalty against uh, Saudi Arabia in their opening game of the World Cup. Eight goals in the league already, and there's another one in this high-profile exhibition game. It hasn't taken them long, and Riyad are warned. I think PSG are here to really put on a show and score a few goals. It's going to be tough for Riyad because these are players from two different sides, of course. So that's a link-up between the players and just the knowledge about strengths and weaknesses will be there but they've never really played it together so it's going to be tough for the Riyadh season team Musa Malega the powerful Mali player looking to open things up for Martinez but again cut out Hakimi Messi suddenly uh, popping up on this side getting plenty of cheers and those brilliant finishes just seems to know where the goal and the keeper are instinctively Soler Good period, this for PSG. Oh, yeah, just uh, hanging on. They don't want to concede another goal here. Messi couldn't quite get to that pass from Neymar. And Riyad Angus are holding on a bit here. Yeah, that was a bit of a, a collector's item there with Neymar and uh, Lionel Messi not on the same wavelength for once. Here is Neymar. Is that Martinez, the uh, Argentine, playing under... Gallardo today, uh, Marcelo Gallardo, who had uh, one year at PSG. Actually, PSG finished 16th that season. That was a, a long time ago. But, uh, rather more successful spells at Monaco and River Plate. Ronaldo, his first touch for his new club. Getting the cross in just about. This is Salam Al Dalsari, the player we were talking about, who scored that uh, historic goal. You can say that for Saudi Arabia in the World Cup. Ronaldo with his first chance, and it's held by Navas. Well, not wasting any time there. Head down. Two-footed player very much, Ronaldo, and not far there. Well, he had uh, plenty of speed to burn there. One of the uh, criticisms of Ronaldo in recent years is he's not quite as quickly off uh, a uh, standing start as he used to, but uh, that was a big gaping hole for him to run into. Riyad come again. Gustavo, the uh, shot from distance. Doesn't know how to shoot from distance, the Brazilian. That was high and wide. One of the few players on the pitch today who's very, very uh, aware and familiar with uh, playing against Paris Saint-Germain in his days with uh, Olympique de Marseille. Yeah, a very top-level player, wasn't he? He played at uh, Bayern Munich, champion there of Germany, and Hoffenheim. It's going to be uh, perhaps a player that Ronaldo can uh, lean on, get some information about the Saudi league. Obviously, no language problems between those two, Brazilian and Portuguese. Good start, uh, Angus, to this match. Yeah, it's uh, entertaining and uh, has a uh, an exhibition game. There is a trophy to be won at the end of this, so there is something to play for. It's not just a friendly. Seven minutes played. Lionel Messi, the difference so far with a classic goal, just uh, guiding it past the keeper, making it look easy. It wasn't. As uh, Oase goes long, tearing header from uh, Marquinhos. Ruiz and Soler linking up and Bappe. Nice pitch at Real at uh, Riyadh. No problems there. Soler and Bappe onside. Riyadh just about clear their lines through Abdullah Al Kabadi. Well, you can see that this is the uh, the freedom that uh, the three up front have. They interchange. 
Mbappe this time coming down the right-hand side, trying to get that ball into the middle where Lionel Messi and Neymar were arriving. She take the corner quickly. Coming off a defeat against Rennes in Liga. He'll be heading back to France to play a cup match on Monday against the Minos. Peter Cassel plays six division football in the amateur leagues for the moment. A match in Saudi Arabia. Mbappe, Messi. And for the moment, some of those Riyadh players chasing shadows. Mbappe, Neymar, little triangles. Messi again. Neymar. Hakimi. Neymar gets it back. Where did uh, Neymar come from? He seems to make 10 metres in uh, no time at all. Ramos. This is good stuff from uh, Paris Saint-Germain. It, it was nice play from Soler as well. He saw the arrival of, um, of uh, Neymar and decided to play the dummy instead of taking the ball on himself. Only played once in the World Cup, did Soler. He was a little bit unlucky. He's uh, Particularly as uh, Luis Enrique is actually a really big fan of his as well. The national coach of Spain. Riyadh playing with the Morega and Ronaldo up front and uh, Ramos just getting a, a head there. Yeah, Ramos is no longer undefeated in a Paris Saint-Germain shirt. He went so long without losing, created a record for Paris Saint-Germain for a start to, without losing a single game. Having a great season. Mbappe coming a bit more central, just a crowded out that time. Abdullah Al-Kabari again. Riyadh looking to play their football as well. Salma al Dasari. Miscommunication there with the Ronaldo. Wish we can uh, forgive them for that. Really play together, so it's going to be tricky for this uh, Riyadh season team. Yeah, not only is it the first time, though it's the only time he'll be playing with him because he plays for Al Hilal, but yeah. um, it, it's, it's, you're, you're, you're coming up against a side that are so used to playing with each other and uh, players here who are more used to playing against each other with regards to the Riyadh uh, selection team. So uh, this is not easy for the Saudi Arabian hosts. Messi inside of the boots. Out comes uh, Al Owais. <laughs> Suddenly Messi kills the ball in an instant. Yeah, Mohamed Al Owais was a uh, goalkeeper. He's uh, not number one at Al Hilal, even though he is the number one at uh, the Saudi Arabian national level. And he was needed to be in good form as well. Unfortunately, his heroics against Poland and Mexico couldn't ultimately see them through to the last 16 in what was a fantastic end to that group where any permutation was on the cards. Some brilliant trickery here from Cristiano Ronaldo. And you got the free kick as well. It is the first uh, interestingly placed free kick for Riyadh. We were playing with Ronaldo and uh, Moussa Malega up front, who's uh, actually born in Paris. The, uh, French players, also a Malian international. Gustavo and Messi. It's up to Yong, the Korean. It's good work from Sergio Ramos. It takes something to get it off him, and the Korean did exactly that. Yong Su Yang. Martinez, Gustavo, Ronaldo, Gustavo, good stop from Navas. And uh, PSG had to deal with uh, a decent effort there, the first uh, shot from uh, Gustavo on target. He can hit a ball, can't he, Angus? He certainly can, and uh, well, Navas has only played once in all competitions this season, so well, unlike a lot of the other players, he actually hasn't seen an awful lot of action in this campaign, and so this game actually is quite useful for him as well. Last season he played just as many games as as uh, Donnarumma, but Donnarumma has been made the number one for the current campaign. Navas, though, with Costa Rica in the World Cup, and, uh, well, he's still got it. And uh, Paris Saint-Germain really blessed with two world-class keepers. Certainly are the decision made that uh, Donnarumma will play the Champions League and all the league games so far, but what a backup to have. Gustavo. Ronaldo, Ronaldo driving through centrally, getting a tackle from his old pal Ramos, and it was a legal one. Yes, so with whom they won so many Champions Leagues together and Liga titles. Yeah, in Two. another life, Mbappe's through. Yeah. Al Owais will have to be very aware because he's 
Probably no one quicker in world football at that level than Kylian Mbappe. Who's our referee today? Abdul Rahman Al Jassim. Well, it just shows you he's he's just a quality defender, isn't he? And that's a wonderful shot set up by Ronaldo. Dealt with by uh, a Korean Jew. A really open start to this match. It's uh, really looks like the players want to put on uh, a good exhibition. They're doing exactly that. Martinez going to the turf, the uh, Argentine. Yeah, ex-Argentine international. The last of his four appearances were against Venezuela back in 2019 when Messi was on the pitch and was uh, Leandro Paredes as well, who is uh, no longer at Paris Saint-Germain at the moment. Another, Arge another Argentine ex-Paris Saint-Germain player, Icardi, actually was in his debut in international football. Yeah, plenty of South American links running through both of these two teams, of course. There's a big Brazilian and Argentine presence in the Saudi League, which is, uh, has started. It's about uh, halfway through. We'll talk about that, but it's been an all-action start. We haven't been able to take our eyes off this match, and that's what we want as... Abdel Hamid looks to launch oh. another attack. Does exactly that. Was he pulled back by Sanchez? <laughs> well, that was very nice from the uh, Saudi Arabian host. And Renato Sanchez realised he was going to get skinned. And just uh, stretched out an arm there on uh, Musa Marega, the former Porto man, Mali international. It was Abdel Hamid actually with that last touch. And it's going to be a free kick. Nicely placed as well. It's going to be interesting to see Ronaldo's position in free kicks. He's a super header of ball, of course. That's uh, Gonzalo Martinez. Maybe he's the one who will be taking it. Likes to take the odd free kick as well, doesn't he, when it's direct? There's obviously no language uh, problem there. Speaks perfect Spanish, does Ronaldo. The language of football. But that's uh, going to drift behind. So, well, what a first 15 minutes we've had, Angus. Yeah, it's... Uh, well. Most of the quality so far has come from Paris Saint-Germain, as you would expect. I mean, this is a side that uh, regularly makes it through to the latter stages of the Champions League. They've reached the final and the semi-finals in two of the three last three years as well. And uh, But uh, they don't look completely overawed. I mean, uh, they must feel a little bit the same against Paris Saint-Germain as Saudi Arabia themselves felt against Argentina at the World Cup. Comes uh, Hakimi again. First time across, nicely done. Neymar, still Neymar, great save from Al Oais. What a ball by Hakimi. And uh, Neymar, it will be a little upset he didn't do more. Danger not over for Riyadh. It comes back to Neymar. Neymar, oh, he was just dribbling through two or three of them. Maybe tried to do a little bit too much, but really good work from Al Oais in that home goal. Well, Cristiano Ronaldo certainly looks up for it tonight, doesn't he? New start for him. 37 years old now. We shouldn't forget that. I mean, not many outfield players are still going at this level at 37. Famously looks after his body. A superb athlete is uh, Cristiano Ronaldo. Ramos and Marquinhos. Well, not bad athletes either, are they? When Bernat taken off his boot by uh, Martinez. Interesting that uh, Paris Saint-Germain only playing with two at the back tonight. They got used to playing with three at the back, but Christophe Gantier has been very much trying to bring in a new system. They've already got two. He wants a third one as well, so that on the likes of Knights against Bayern Munich and other teams, he can adapt the, uh, the tactics. Yeah, it's uh, four at the back, but as you're saying, the fullbacks are pushing right forward. So often it's uh, just Ramos and Marquinhos. Holding fort at the back. And that's why it's also so important that the midfielders as well uh, help out in that way. Everything, of course, built around the fact that you, tr you want to have Neymar, Messi and Mbappe on the pitch together up front. Yep. Uh, strike force. It's, uh, strikes fear to any defence in the world. 18 minutes in. Juan Bernat looking for a second. But Martinez does well, the Argentine, in the, the back flick. Well, the host putting on a show as well, but it falls to Neymar. Ruiz, Neymar. Soler with a diagonal run, but it comes to Mbappe.
with a give and go. Killing Mbappe in with a chance all the way across. Oh. Neymar couldn't quite get a toe to it. Oh, another chance for Neymar that just gets slightly beyond him. Mbappe back on the left hand side to here and a lovely ball through to him by Ruiz, I think it was. Classic play from the midfielder doing the sort of thing that they brought him in for to do. Burnett had the ball of submits. I don't think I can remember that this long a time where one Burnett has not been injured. It's fantastic to see him so fit and uh, for so long at the moment. Yeah, he's had some uh, terrible injury luck over the years, but getting back to his best. Of course, there's no Nuno Mendes at left back. He uh, picked up an injury in that World Cup. We wish him a speedy recovery. Kimpembe also injured just before the World Cup. Really unfortunate for him. They haven't had too much luck with centre-backs. This has happened to them a, lot, a few times over the last couple of seasons. That's why you had Danilo dropping back into a defensive position. It's Aldossari. The Riyad team looking to play a bit of uh, keep ball, and they're doing that well. And quality on the pitch for them as well. Ronaldo just came off his shin. And he, he, not apology, he appreciates a little applause there for that little interchange. And you can see uh, some of the uh, the short passing in triangles from the uh, Saudi Arabian hosts is very much mirroring what the Paris Saint-Germain players are putting together as well. No surprise to see that more and more with Messi. His history at Barcelona was all built on those short triangles of passes and he's very much at his best when uh, he's got players on him and he can just run through them and pass them. Oh, Ronaldo with the blind pass. Luis Gustavo. Gustavo again. Riyad playing some good stuff as well. It's Abdul Hamid. Altasari. Abdul Hamid again, one of the Al Halal players, is the big uh, Paris born striker. Morega. Comes back to Morega. <laughs> throws himself at the ball. Brave stuff. But there's a foul in there somewhere. It's an offside. Unfortunately, two of the players were virtually on the byline, so when they passed to each other, inevitably one of them was offside. That's Al Khalifi there, looking uh, quite nervous, actually. It's a game that uh, means something to them. Qatar against Saudi Arabia. Nice little local derby in terms of the management of these two great sides. Even though there's three great sides, you could argue. Killing Mbappe, looking to stretch his legs, cuts inside. Neymar, the defensive header again. From Abdul Hamid. PSG coming again. Messi. Oh, that flick over. <laughs> Nearly got to Mbappe. One of those uh, little flicks that he's just mastered. Yeah. This time, slightly miscued. Yeah, they have been linking up, though, so much better this season. One of the great things about uh, Messi's first campaign at Paris Saint-Germain was he got a lot of criticism because he wasn't scoring goals, but he was setting up so many chances. And one of the reasons why Kylian Mbappe was top scorer last season, and indeed again at the moment for this season, is how many chances are being set up for him by the Argentine. Argentine is not quite as quick as he used to be and has taken up a slightly different role. Setting up chances for the likes of uh, Neymar and for uh, especially for Mbappe. Neymar has also been setting up chances for Mbappe as well. And of course, uh, Neymar started off by scoring seven goals in his first five league iron games and set up six. It was an amazing start to the campaign by both Mbappe and by, by Neymar. Yeah, Neymar has 11 league iron goals, Mbappe 13. It's here, maybe, for Ronaldo. Well, <laughs> ever competitive. Cristiano Ronaldo he thought there was a foul in there. And Aldo Sawi, who set that ball on a plate for him, at least he thought he had, head in hands after the Portuguese was unable to get onto it. It was Gustavo. Anyone who thought Abdul Rahman al Jassim would have a, an easy game as a referee, think again. He had some decisions to make in the first half of he's the first half. He's Neymar. Also, sorry, he's also had to keep up with play as well. <laughs> exactly. He's only 35, so he's one of the younger referees out there. Mbappe. Mbappe. Had a little bit of time off after the uh, 
World Cup, but he did play a couple of games and then he had a little break. He actually turned up for training on the Wednesday after the World Cup final, which uh, takes some doing. Some of the PSG staff uh, didn't actually expect him to turn up, but the ultimate professional. Bernat. Mbappe. Oh, lovely back flick. One Bernat. Will this be two? No. Sanchez. Hakimi. Hakimi gets it back from, May from Messi. They're just lining up, prepared to throw men forward. Well, there was a little um, tap there through by the referee that really um, perhaps set up that ball. You think it should have really been blown back for a drop ball, but it allowed uh, this chance to be set up. Burnout again is uh, getting quite a lot of joy down that left side. Really good defensive interception. Saw it bypass three Paris Saint-Germain players coming into the box looking to get onto it. 24 minutes gone. It's 1-0 to PSG. Lionel Messi with a delicate but very clever goal early on, third minute. The difference so far, but he'd be uh, brave to uh, bet against any more goals here. Two teams really going for it. So it's Abdul Hamid, who's been busy down this left-hand side. The Al Halal left back. Yeah, there's no reverse gear on him. He uh, really does <laughs> like to, to, to get forward. He was the man, though, that pulled down uh, Paredes for the penalty that saw uh, Lionel Messi give Argentina the lead. Well, Mbappe's through. Is there an offside? That doesn't look like it. Killing Mbappe for two. The lead is doubled. Let's see if the flag goes up, and it does. There is uh, VAR in uh, attendance today. Let's have a look at that one. This is... Not quite the angle to have a look at it. It was a lovely piece of work from Messi. Well, it was uh, the, the, the fullback came forward and uh, sold himself short, but Messi couldn't get the ball away before Mbappe had started off. And, of course, he's got such lightning speed that uh, you, unless you get the pass absolutely on the money, he's going to be past the defender before you know it. And, unfortunately, that was the case there for him. Cristiano Ronaldo. He was signed with uh, Al Nasser. Might have gone to Al Hilal, but they have a transfer ban at the moment. Yep. So uh, Al Nassar swept in and took the glory. <laughs> Abdul Hamid wants it back, gets it back. Is Al Kabari, Al Bulai, Luis Gustavo with the long ball to Ronaldo. I think we're seeing a lot of that in the Saudi league. Over the next few months, a oh, brilliant flick back from Ronaldo. Hakimi clears up. That was a brilliant vision from Ronaldo, and that's the kind of stuff that I think you can still see from him. I've lost a little bit of pace, but still that vision and wonderful touch. Neymar at the other end, a nice open match this one. Neymar, Mbappe. Neymar's come close a couple of times. It's the opening 26 minutes. Ruiz. Messi, will you go for the shot? Messi tries his luck, just over. Well, I'm not quite sure what Luis Gonzalo was thinking there, allowing Messi to come back onto his left foot and shoot unopposed. But uh, that all started off from a really nice piece of anticipation. We were talking about Ronaldo's back heel, but it was the anticipation by Akimi that stopped it getting through to Aldasawi that set up that attack. Well, there must have been a touch there, it's a corner. Punched out by Al Owais. Messi back to Hakimi. And Messi again. Marega scampering after that. He's an all action uh, centre forward, is Marega, born just outside of Paris. Mali International. Gonna go back to Navas in goal. Quite a few familiar names playing uh, in Riyadh. Uh, Alvaro Gonzalez, the former Marseille man, not playing here. Uh, nor is David Ospina, former Nice and Arsenal goalkeeper. Unfortunately, he's injured. Uh, Gilan Conan, yeah, Ivory Coast international. So it's a pretty metropolitan league these days, you know, the uh, Saudi league. Yeah, Odia Nagalo is also injured as well. He's one of the top scorers in the Saudi Arabian professional league. Al Nasser do currently lead the league. They're 30 points from 13 games. 
ahead of Al Halal, who have 29 points. As Gustavo clears up, just a one point gap. And uh, Al Itihad, who another giant of Saudi Arabian football, on 28 points as Martinez is fouled. Yeah, they were in action earlier today, actually. There were a couple of Saudi Arabian uh, professional league games played before the kickoff of this uh, exhibition game, this gala performance. 46th year of the league, 12 clubs. Uh, it's going to be in increased to 18. Coaches, interestingly, from 12 different nations, so it is a very international league, certainly when it comes to coaching. Players as well, there is a limit now of eight foreigners Up from seven there's one Marega Did well to turn and beat Ramos well, that was just half the job Lionel Messi the difference so far Neymar just skips past his man and gets past Gustavo, his countryman. Can't get past uh, Al Bulayi. He's a man mountain of a defender. Al Halal are the uh, defending champions of the Saudi League. Al Nasser looking to get their 10th title. That's been the Al Halal who've dominated the last few years. Actually, the three time defending champions are Al Hilal. Yeah, they went to the uh, Club World Cup, which is uh, just about to start again in 2019. And unfortunately, El Balay scored an own goal <laughs> in the semi-final against Flamenco. Yeah, that, that was won by Liverpool, actually, against the South Americans in the final. Yeah, the Club World Cup will start a couple of weeks with uh, Al Halal there. It will take place in Morocco. Ramos to Bernat for PSG. He scored early on, nearly uh, scored a second or third. So far, the uh, Riyadh season team just about holding them out. Messi, Neymar, brilliant footwork. Bernat, Mbappe. The Korean defender just uh, ushering the ball out. Yeah, good work by uh, Jang Hung Su, 31-year-old centre-back uh, who... Uh, can obviously play out on the wide of the defence and also in defensive midfielder, the former FC Tokyo man. It just shows how uh, international this league is with Asian players here, a lot of South Americans. And Africans, Marega, one of them, just tries to keep on his feet. The uh, Paris-born Mali international. Sergio Ramos just biting his ankles as he went past. Yeah, that's a real clash though, isn't it? Two uh, strong guys, centre forward and... Centre back. He played in a good spirit, but certainly very, very competitive. And Riyadh. Yes, yeah, a nice surprise, isn't it? Yeah, Martinez will take this one. Gonzalo Kitty Martinez, the yeah. two time Copa Libertadores winners. Ronaldo looking for the header. He gets close to it. He gets a clattering from Navas. Well, Navas. Maybe and got a Ronaldo. clattering. Yeah. I think Navas is going to be fine. Navas will be okay, but I think the fans wondering, what is that? For a second, I was wondering if uh, Mr. Al Jassim was pointing to the penalty spot. We have seen that a couple of times, and judging by the uh, body language of some of the PSG players, well, he threw the Qatari in. ref has given a, a pen. It's definitely onside, and, uh, well, not quite sure how I could see this as a penalty, to be quite honest with you. Ronaldo throws himself at it, and they just hit each other. I'm not sure how that's a foul one way or the other. Well, two players with their eyes very much on the ball. I agree with you there. And anyone who thought this would just be a friendly kickabout, think again. PSG not happy that there's a suggestion of a penalty. This is a good look at it. Ronaldo definitely looking at the ball. And I think Navas did too much wrong there, did he, Angus? Well, the thing is, they both missed the ball. So if Ronaldo had got something on the header, then I would see the point. But... You could argue, I mean, it's actually, in some sense, it's quite refreshing that the, the decision has gone the way of the outfield player. Those sorts of decisions usually go the way of the uh, the goalkeeper. Yeah, some say keepers overprotected in the modern age. 
It's not a, if it's a foul, it's a penalty. They're the rules of football. The question is, is it a foul? And all that, those uh, matches for Real Madrid have been forgotten between <laughs> each other. Those Champions League wins, Liga titles. And uh, in the end, I think, I think maybe the respect between the, the two players, they came through in the end because clearly Navas does not think that that was a penalty. Well, he's got a yellow card into the bargain. Poor old Kayla Navas doesn't play too much football. Maybe that's another element as well in as much as he... Uh, there's no too much goalkeeping practice of late. The result is a penalty. Cristiano Ronaldo. Still, he's got a, a huge bruise uh, appearing underneath his left eye by the looks of it. Yeah, you can see that there. Yeah, sort of boxer's wound. Yeah. Well, there's no doubt he didn't put it on. I mean, that was not a dive or anything like that. They definitely hit each other, but that's the point. Poor Cristiano Ronaldo clearly in a bit of pain, but he's a determined player and he wants to score his first goal in Saudi Arabia it's Ronaldo against Navas Navas got a touch but Ronaldo scores the goal just got a big whack under the eye and you can see what it means to the local fans and dignitaries as well it's Riyad 1 PSG 1 when he'd only scored one goal for Manchester United this season in the uh, Premier League at Goodison Park back in uh, October. It was a decent effort from uh, Navas, just hit with too much power, Angus. Well, it was a classic uh, penalty. He and Messi both very confident from spot kicks. Even if uh, Navas had got a better dive, too high for him. The first Ronaldo celebration in Saudi Arabia for the uh, Riyadh season team. So we have a match on our hands. It's uh, one apiece. And PSG were not happy with that award being given. That shows this is a competitive fixture. I look forward to the next hour of this match. Uh, there will be a penalty shootout if it stays like this and a trophy to be awarded, the uh, Riyadh season trophy as uh, the crowd are on their feet. Screaming Ronaldo. And screaming PSG as well. A good match on our hands here. One apiece at the King Fahd Stadium. We haven't seen too much of the coaches so far. Marcelo Gallardo is uh, coaching this home team, the uh, Riyadh team. Up against uh, Christophe Galtier, of course. 48 goals he scored in his best ever league season for Real Madrid back in the 2014-15 season. Messi, though, a couple of seasons before that, reached 50 goals in the Liga when both of them were at the height of their powers. 701 club goals before today as uh, Neymar whacked to the turf by Ronaldo. What was it, Gustavo? I think they both went for him there, both uh, making sure Neymar wasn't going to make any more progress. Messi. Hakimi, I wonder how PSG will react to that. Right and tackle. al -Bulay. Back to Alawais, who clears. And the Saud Abdel Hamid with a great tackle. Because uh, there is no doubting the power and the threat that uh, Akraf Hakimi brings down that right-hand side. Kind of Navas showing he's a pretty good footballer as well as a goalkeeper. Marquinhos. Both the big guns have scored. Yep. And uh, Ronaldo will certainly have uh, a black eye tomorrow. He's got the big... Red bruise under that uh, left eye of his. Oh. Mbappe, brilliantly done. Skips past two players. Mbappe cleared by El Boulay. It's going to be a corner. Who would be a right back in uh, modern day football against Paris Saint Germain or the French national team? He's scary. Full tilt, perfect control of the ball. Absolutely no chance there for Sultan Al Ghanam, the Saudi Arabian international right back. Yeah, it was a fascinating battle when he came up against uh, Hakimi, wasn't it? When France played Morocco. Two very good friends. They're genuinely good friends off the pitch. And coming literally face-to-face -face in that World Cup game in Qatar. It was a uh, great prospect. And uh, France coming out winners that time. Ruiz. New signing, as is uh, Rato Sanchez. It's a new midfield for a PSG. Soler in there as well. Three new buys. We'll see some changes in the second half. Messi, three ahead of him. 
Renato Sanchez. Give and go off uh, mess off uh, Neymar worked pretty well. That's a super pass through to Soler into the danger area, packed out by Al Almri. There's a good ball in again from the left hand side. They're going to have to be very, very, very careful because uh, when you've got uh, Hakimi down one side and one burnout, who's not quite as attacking as Nuno Mendes, but nevertheless still presents a threat. They are able to create such width. The chat between uh, Gustavo and Ramos, and what that's about. Two Abdul masters of the dark arts in football. Abdul Rahman Al Jassim uh, just telling the players to concentrate on the football, a little bit less pushing and shoving. Messi's corner. Riyad team win the ball up. Well, whoa, down. Al Dosari. What's going to be the decision from Abdul Rahman Al Jassim? I wonder. It's a oh. red. Would you believe it? It's a red card in this exhibition game. Al Dosari was through, and minutes after what you could say was a controversial penalty, Juan Barnat has got his marching orders, and PSG are down to 10. Astonishing. He's only ever had one red card in his professional career in his first season with Paris Saint-Germain. Now, let's see. Well, Akraf Hakimi was climbing all over the back of his man as well, as you'll see. Look at this. Over the top of Martinez. Aldersawi's pace, and it's not a good tackle, but I don't know. Is it really the sort of match you want to hand a red card out for that? Well, I mean, it's not a goal-scoring a, a, a opportunity but goodness me if if you thought any if there was any doubt whether or not this is a friendly i think it's been removed <laughs> that's for sure and the, you can see that from the reaction of psg players well i think it's all about what you said was that a goal scoring opportunity it's a, a non-factual decision for abdul rahman al jassim that means he makes the decision that's not a decision for var and according to the qatari ref it's well, a red card for one burner so uh christoph galtier who we saw a few seconds ago Lionel Messi is uh, watching it. Yeah, well, I think he's technically the last man, I suppose, but on the halfway line, that seems sl a bit of a stretch. Salam Al Dasari, who scored that wonderful goal in the World Cup, down, and uh, poor Owen Bernat. Can't believe it. <laughs> Can't believe it. I don't think many 10. people can believe there's a red card <laughs> in an exhibition oh. game, but this is a really competitive match. The question is will uh, Geltier take off Mbappe, Neymar, or Messi? He surely needs a left back. Marquinhos having a word, and this was the challenge again. Well, judge that for yourself. Late challenge, and down goes Al Dasari, and out came the red card. Well, for the moment, no substitute. That will uh, give some extra hope to Ronaldo. And the Riyadh season team and uh, it's Galtier. Is that a 3 2? Maybe two up front, three in the middle. Got four minutes to hold out and then uh, reshuffle the pack yeah, at well, half time. Al Dasari. Riyadh would love to nick one here and go in ahead. Ronaldo, it's a nice diagonal run. Turns. Abdul Hamid wants it back. Comes through to the big man, Marega. Jang. It's Fabian Ruiz who's uh, slotted in at left back at the moment. Renato Sanchez scrapping for that. And the PSG will feel a little hard done by him. Want to score, even with 10. Neymar, Mbappe outside him. Here is Kylian Mbappe. Kylian Mbappe. Corner. Well, we've seen him do that so often in Liga and especially in the Champions League uh, this season as well where he's been right up there amongst the top scorers turning back onto his right foot either going to the far post or the near post it doesn't matter to him would have been a great uh, reply to that red card if he'd managed to score there though Ruiz Mbappe four in the box Marquinhos it's 2-1 
Would you believe it? Marquinhos up for the corner. Mbappe finds his captain. And Paris Saint-Germain have the lead in this very competitive match against Riyadh. It's Riyadh 1, PSG 2. Well, the sort of goal that you would expect to Mbappe to have popped in and turned up to uh, put away. Lovely piece. Marquinhos, usually a player who scores with his head at set pieces. But uh, they didn't really press. Allowed Mbappe to pick his spot into the uh, box. And the other man going in there was actually the other centre-back, Sergio Ramos. So it would have been a centre-back either way. Marquinhos has scored a couple in the league. And he would have enjoyed that. Uh, slightly off the shins, but after what's happened in the opening 43 odd minutes, no, actually, oh, I take I, that I, back. I, I think that's a lovely no, little yeah, dink. No, actually, that was uh, a lovely little dink from Marquinhos. It was. My, my apologies. I thought it actually just come off the shin. It was actually a brilliant piece of improvisation. And Marcelo Gallardo, a first uh, look at the Argentine legend. Can't quite believe what's happened playing against 10. But if you've got 10 players of this quality, there's always danger. And it's 2 1 Paris Saint Germain. Fans are somewhat stunned after that. You think, well, down to 10. PSG will, might defend in the closing seconds of the half. Well, I think they'll be particularly annoyed because they could understand it if it was Neymar, Messi or Mbappe. <laughs> but for Marquinhos to come forward and finish like that as yeah. much as anything else must be a bit hard to take. He scored some big goals over the years, including the latter stages of uh, Champions League, of course. And that was a lovely finish. Absolutely right there. He just uh, adjusted his foot to get it in. Marega. Aldasari scrapping for that. Bit of a risk there. Al Kabari wins that one. Luis Gustavo, Martinez, Ronaldo. Messi looking for a third in this first half. Messi, Mbappe, Mbappe still. Lionel Messi onto that left boot of his and it's back to killing Mbappe. Oh. Good save from Al Ois and very nearly a third. Well, Mohamed Alois, he kept his side in the World Cup uh, through the defeats against Poland and Mexico. Gave every chance. Mbappe. Neymar. The give and go brilliantly done. Neymar skips past his man. Is that a penalty? No, says Abdul Rahman Al Jassim. VAR is talking to him though. They certainly are. And I think a rather nervous Al Boulay just wants to get on with it. Let's have another look at that one. Yeah, Neymar there losing his trickery. Well, he's going down, I think. There is a handout though, there's no doubt about that by Ali Al Boulay. Seen those given, but uh, the decision I think this time is play on. Neymar, the most fouled player against him, in other words, uh, in Liga. Not on the end of a foul there. Good defending, actually, in the end here that stopped uh, Messi shooting straight away, but really good off his line was uh, Mohamed al Ois and that uh, cut down the angle for Mbappe to be able to go for. I thought he might actually try and chip the keeper from there. Ah, VAR is going to have a look at that. And our referee, Abdul Rahman al Jassim will go to the monitor and let's see what the Qatari ref makes of that foul that's what VAR is there for it's the angle to have a look at it was that a foul judge that for yourself well the thing is is there a clear and obvious error made by the referee there is contact It's not very much. And what's the referee going to decide? Is he going to stick with his decision or is he going to change it? Oof. It's going to change Penalty. it. Penalty. Neymar relieved and Neymar will think he's uh, justified. The foul from uh, Al Boulay and PSG have a real chance to score a second goal with only 10 on the pitch. Neymar on Mbappe to take this. Both have done so. Neymar earned the penalty. Neymar will take it. Certainly will. Neymar against Al Ois. Didn't actually take a penalty in that shootout for Brazil in the World Cup. 
I think he was supposed to be the fifth taker, wasn't he? It certainly was. But Marquinhos missed his, and that ended it. Neymar with a chance to get some clear blue water between PSG and the Riyadh season team. Saved. Tried to put Alois the wrong way, and the Saudi keeper read it. Well, it was the usual uh, run-up. He uh, stutters his run-up. He looks to see where the... Uh, Keeper is going to go, and Alois just waited for him. Well, to say this first half has been action-packed, <laughs> not, not giving it the credit it deserves. Had a red card, had a missed penalty. It's two-one for PSG. Ronaldo into the box intelligently. Well, I thought he was going to go down there. Ronaldo, Hakimi up against him. First touch, not quite the best, but it's going to be a free kick. A foul on Martinez. Yeah, that was a bit fortunate for uh, the home side because his first touch was heavy. He then tried to be clever and uh, Renato Sanchez came in. Here's the uh, his classic run up from Neymar. But uh, Alois was wasteful. It is not very often that you see Neymar fail to convert a penalty. He's got that style that he's made his own. And uh, as you say, I guess it almost always works. Not that time. And that's a bruise under Ronaldo's left eye. Is, uh, Getting bigger and bigger. Now, well, what was I saying earlier? Direct free kick. And Cristiano Ronaldo will be very, very keen to take this with a patented style. <laughs> distinctive walk back. Ronaldo has scored a penalty. Nervy looking PSG players in the wall. Referee. Just uh, insisting that the players stay back. Ronaldo goes through that routine again. Four steps back. Maybe a bit of a let off for Riyad. The penalty saved. This might be the last kick of the first half. Ronaldo into that wall. Second shot into the wall as well. Neymar. The first half we've had. Can't take your eyes off this one. Nearly five minutes of uh, time added on as well at the end of this first half. Yeah, with that penalty, I think that's justified. Abdul Hamid. Dangerous cross. It's off the post from Ronaldo. Danger not over. Ronaldo scored again. Would you believe it? The ball cannoning off the post. And Ronaldo showing he's still got that goal-scoring touch. Incredibly, at the King Fahd Stadium. It's PSG 2 Riyad too. Well, he kept his eye on the ball, didn't he? Basically, in that, that was not allowing your head to drop after disappointment from a first failed attempt. The free kick first, then the rebound. Ball stayed there. He stayed in a dangerous position. That's why he scored so many goals over the years. Looks on side to me. It's a magnificent header. Off the... Uh, post and he's sharp as anything to get onto that rebound it's not an easy finish either when that comes in he's got to point that back from where it's coming and uh, well they have got 11 men against 10 of uh, Paris Saint-Germain so it shouldn't be too surprising that they have scored something it's a cracking game Andreas this is a great warm-up I think this is not a runabout for Paris Saint-Germain this is a proper test Anything but, and Ronaldo wants to prove that he's still got that goal scoring instinct. He scored two already today, and that is it for the first half at the King Fahd Stadium in Riyadh. It's PSG 2, the Riyadh season 2 at half time. So we've had 45 explosive minutes, and Ronaldo with that. <laughs> Bruise rapidly developing under his left eye. Let's hope he's okay for uh, the weekend because he's going to play his first league match there. Scored a penalty, scored again. Messi scored, Marquinhos scored, and Piercy have missed a penalty. <laughs> well, that's a half that had everything in it, isn't it? It really is. I mean, uh, there was no gentle run about. There was, uh, that's a proper game taken very seriously by everybody, including the referee who sent off uh, Juan Bernat towards the end of that half and uh, well hopefully the second half will uh, bring us just as much incident and eventuality 
So a bit of musical entertainment for these fans. 2-2, uh, a half-time score. Remember, if it stays like this, we will have a penalty shootout, but it doesn't look like it's going to stay like this. There's uh, more goals to come, surely, for this young man and uh, the rest of the fans in the capital. Good to see the fans so excited by this. Ronaldo with his first match in the capital. This is a, a team of Al-Halal and al Nasser players up against Paris Saint-Germain, who are down to 10 in what's been a really competitive match. This uh, Super Stadium, it's uh, recently hosted uh, the Spanish Super Cup final, won by Barcelona in the Italian Super Cup. It, it's actually a multifunctional stadium for K-pop fans out there. BTS have played here, and, uh, plenty of music here. David Guetta has done uh, a concert here as well, the French DJ. So it's a multi-purpose arena, and today it's seen quite a spectacle. Only 45 minutes gone as well, 2-2 between PSG and the Riyadh season team. So it was Messi against Ronaldo, PSG visiting uh, the Riyadh season team, uh, made up of players from Al Nasser and Al Halal. Within three minutes, a goal for Lionel Messi, just uh, putting it past Al Awais with ease. And at that stage, it looked like this might be easy for Paris Saint-Germain. It was a super start and a wonderful pass from Neymar. So the man who won the World Cup not too far from here in Qatar. The early smiles with uh, Mbappe. But plenty of incident. This was uh, Ronaldo trying his luck and well held by Kaylan Navas. Two former uh, Real Madrid men going head to head today. Ronaldo was ready to pounce here. And that was given as a penalty. A foul against Kaylan Navas. Picked up a yellow. More importantly, the penalty given. Ronaldo getting a whack in the face. He picked himself up. Navas, brave attempt to get to it, but just too powerful. And that made it one apiece. It was in the 33rd minute. This was at half of a couple of penalties. More of that later. Ronaldo... Striking to make that one apiece. Up at the other end, Messi's corner. And look at this breakaway. It was good work from Al. Dasari, and here he was fouled by one Bernat and Abdul Rahman Al Jassim had absolutely no doubt at all. The red card coming out. The wry smile from the Spaniard. That challenge. The question was, was it a goal scoring opportunity? The decision was yes, but even with 10 men, PSG creating a chance. Marquinhos and Ramos were both up. Marquinhos putting it away. 2 1. couple of goals in the league so far and PSG and Brazil captain would have enjoyed that so that was with a couple of minutes left to play in the first half and if we thought that was it for first half entertainment well think again plenty more to come Neymar bearing down on goal and after a VAR decision that was given as a penalty the foul by Al-Bulayi 
Upstep Neymar for 3 1. No. A save from uh, Al Owais. Mohamed Al Owais. And it got worse for Paris with Abdul Hamid. Look at that header off the post. Ramos couldn't quite clear it. And Ronaldo clearly enjoying that one. Smacking the ball in with his left foot. No offside given. And from 2-1 to nearly 3-1 to 2-2. The aerial view of Ronaldo's second goal of the 45 minutes. Well, part of this evening, of course, is to uh, encourage the next generation. And uh, some of that is uh, handing out some uh, very, very treasured shirts with uh, some of the superstars' signatures on it. Something that will be treasured from now on. See there, uh, definitely the signature of Salam al Dasawi on the uh, right-hand side. Argentina got a lot of support, actually, um, from uh, the Qataris. Every time Argentina played a, a home game, well, I say every time they played a game, it felt like a home game because three quarters of the stadium seemed to be dressed in either uh, sky blue and white or at least carrying Argentina flags and uh, not at least in the final against France, where the French supporters seemed to be rather outnumbered. Yeah, I was lucky enough to be in Qatar for the World Cup, and uh, you're absolutely right. Argentine fans everywhere. And, uh, the famous blue and white uh, shirts present on the, the metro in the streets. It really was uh, quite something. Uh, very many official figures, but uh, I think they're the most popular team in Qatar. And around this part of the world, Brazil very popular as well. Plenty of French fans as well. We'll stay with us. We'll be back for the second half very soon.
Second half, a few minutes away. It's uh, the Riyadh season team against Paris Saint-Germain. And it's 2-2, an action-packed first half. We've had two penalties, one missed. Messi and Marquinhos scoring for the visitors. And two goals for Cristiano Ronaldo. One from the spot. And one a real poacher's effort to get the ball, ball past Navas and to make it 2-2 right before the end of that first half. Well, Paris Saint-Germain have got uh, plenty of important matches coming up in the near future, not the least of which is the beginning of the knockout rounds of the UEFA Champions League. Midway through uh, February, Valentine's Day, would you believe, they start off against the uh, Germans of Bayern Munich, with whom they've had a very, very strong recent history as a Paris Saint-Germain. Bayern have only played three times, actually, since uh, the end of the group stage. Paris Saint-Germain have played a few more times than that. Winter break for Paris Saint-Germain from November until the end of December, of course, when the World Cup was on. Both sides top of their domestic leagues. And uh, Bayern Munich, the uh, route to the top of the Bundesliga has not been a smooth one this season. With the interlopers of Freiburg and Union Berlin getting in their way. However, they progressed to the round of 16 of the... DFB Pokal, the uh, German version of the Coupe de France. Paris Saint-Germain have their Coupe de France match against six-tier opposition coming up on Monday. And uh, then they have to get their minds back on to the uh, Liga battle that seems to be developing a little bit more than uh, Paris Saint-Germain would like against Lens. The uh, gap uh, not so great as it was. Lens, of course, beat Paris Saint-Germain recently as well. So that's gearing up to be uh, an interesting uh, fight for Christophe Galtier and his men. Unbeaten in their first 16 league and games this term. They've lost two of their last three now, so Paris Saint-Germain need to get that sorted out as they, uh, head, in, as they head into the uh, business end. Paris Saint-Germain in the Champions League again, thanks to their 10th league and title last season getting that title back after Lille stole it from them the season before that and uh, Saint-Étienne ironically when Paris Saint-Germain won that 10th title to equal Saint-Étienne the Les Verts, the Greens were relegated in the same season and uh, they're not exactly enjoying life in Ligue 2 either at the moment Gantier is a new side won four of their six Group H games beating uh, Juventus Maccabi Haifa 1-1 one, one, uh, twice against Benfica as well, who stole the top spot away from them on the very last day of the uh, group stage with uh, five goals in the last 30 minutes on match day six. They're still top six, the top spot away from them on away goals scored. The Riyadh season team taking to the pitch, and the good news for their fans is that even with that bruise, Ronaldo is back. I wonder how long he'll play of the 90 minutes. He will no doubt want to play the whole match. The uh, magic sponge applied to that nasty looking uh, yeah, not bruise that under magic, the to eye. To be quite honest with you, it looks a nasty shiner. It does, yeah. It looks like he's been uh, in a, a boxing match. There's uh, Gallardo. He wasn't afraid to get into a bit of a tackle uh, in his time. A super player he was. He was yeah. a great midfield player, but you're right. He, he did uh, get involved, got stuck into matches and... Uh, Wonderful player at Monaco. He just had one year at PSG, which was a bit less successful, but uh, still has uh, good memories of Paris. I saw in an interview. And this is uh, Kylian Mbappe, Paris born, of course, in uh, Bondi, just outside of Paris with Neymar, who looks in determined form. Now, the question is, do uh, PSG bring on more defensive players? On the bench, they've got Danilo Pereira, who can play, obviously, defensively, uh, more of a natural defensive midfield player. Vitinha. But they're a bit short of defenders just because of um, injuries. There's no Mukiele, there's no Mendes here, there's no Kimpembe as Ronaldo and Mbappe have a bit of a chat. I wonder what yeah. language. Uh, Mbappe speaks very good Spanish, you know. Maybe uh, that's in Spanish or English. He's real I think this is probably English, Mbappe. Yeah. Yeah. Mbappe, for a young man who's never played outside of France, is, uh, speaks three languages. And Ronaldo seeing the funny side of uh, getting that whack from uh, his old teammate. Kaylin Navas, I think that does make a difference. They know each other very well, and Navas, Navas is a, a great pro. And uh, Ronaldo saying, 
that's well, not that well, much, is it? It's, it's, not, it's not big. <laughs> Mbappe saying now, is that I've, it? Uh, I've seen worse. That's a great shot, that one. <laughs> Be seen around the world. That's a great shot, two of the world's, uh, world's best players having a laugh at half time, but it's getting very serious as the second half gets ready to go. Get that Taliska on, who's uh, an attacking midfield player for Riyadh, and as I, as I suspected, Vitinha on as well. And Danilo, well, he's a man who can uh, tie up a midfield or indeed a, a defence, so it's a good one to bring on. It's quite an attacking move. Al Ganam going off, playing on the right side of defence. And we've got two more attacking players with uh, Taliska coming on. And, uh, Ali Lajami coming on. They're two players who are, will be playing with Ronaldo this season. They're both Al Nasser players. Yeah, reinforcements at the back and up front for uh, the uh, Riyadh selection. Yeah, Lajami played defensively and Taliska further up. He's uh, an exciting attacking midfield player. Is uh, Anderson Taliska, the Brazilian, 1 metre 90, ex uh, Benfica players, big guys you can see. Brazil under 23 international. He was in Chinese uh, football before he came into uh, the Saudi Arabian League with Al Nasser. Al Jamie actually is a, a Saudi Arabian international but wasn't in the squad for the World Cup that's just passed. How do you think this might play out in the second half? It's been very competitive, hasn't it, Angus? <laughs> Who knows? I mean, I didn't expect the first half to go the way it did. I mean, it was a, a first half that it, it felt like a knockout game, to be quite honest with you. It is... Uh, I can't imagine we're going to get quite as much action in the second half. I think that the uh, the fact that Paris Saint-Germain down to 10 men is going to make a difference the more we go into this. I well, mean, the last thing that uh, Christophe Galtier wants is for his players to go back for tired at the end of this. That's true. So I'm sure we'll see some subs and Bettinia is on. It would have been fascinating uh, to know what was said at half-time. And one lucky member of the public maybe did because there was a VIP ticket which included a trip into the half-time dressing rooms. There's <laughs> now that's, I think, corner. in the word corner. I never thought that was just going to bounce out, and it uh, it didn't. Well, there's a measure of just how quick that uh, Salam al Dasawi is. Asia's best player. I don't think there's any doubt about that. He proved it in the World Cup he, uh, with that uh, performance against Argentina. I think after the euphoria of that win against the Argentines, they struggled to sort of get themselves back up again. It felt like a World Cup final for them. So the first corner of the second half. So swung in and it's a save from Navas and cleared eventually by Soler. It was a, a really good effort and PSG in danger of going behind there. Yeah, Martinez got between the defenders and a lovely downward head. It was a fantastic save. The sub. So this got thwarted that time. Well, maybe we are going to get the same sort of half in the second <laughs> half as we got in the first. It was uh, non-stop action, goals, red cards, missed penalties, scored penalties. We had it all. I think that is Danilo coming on. I think we actually saw him come on, but pretty sure uh, the big Portuguese is on. So there's two Portuguese players on, Vitinha and uh, Danilo. Yeah, Ruiz has stayed on the uh, left-back uh, position and, uh, with the sending off uh, in that first half and uh, Danilo is fitted in in the right-back position. Messi, is Messi offside? Messi goes for the shot. Was that a handball? That's well, outside the area, isn't it? If that's it? a handball, that could be a red card unless there was an offside before, in which case play would have already stopped. I think there was a flag. Meanwhile, at the other end, <laughs> we go again? Ronaldo, you cannot take your eyes off this for a second. Martinez. Nearly comes to Ronaldo. But uh, I think he might be a busy left back. Yeah, uh, Soler. Ruiz, excuse me, is at left back. Yeah, it has to be said that Juan Burnout wouldn't have got that header. And being a lot shorter than Ruiz. Indeed, he's going to get to uh, practice as a, a left back. It's not really his first role. The shot just over. Sub Taliska showing that he can hit a shot from distance. 
Well, the uh, Riyadh selection are after a scalp, aren't they, here? Blazing start from the home side. And uh, Navas has shown his quality to make sure that it's still 2-2. Really drove that well, Talisker. Only just over the top. Brazilian looking to outshine the Brazilians on uh, the Paris Saint-Germain side. He's got 11 goals already in the uh, Saudi Arabian Professional League this season. Coming off the back of the 20 odds he scored last campaign. He's uh, found a, a new lease of life in Saudi Arabia. So Rui is playing at left back, it looks like, for this second half. That might change. So it is for the moment. Danilo, composed, very versatile player. Didn't really play too much uh, in defence until coming to PSG. Thomas Tuchel tried him out there. Played a few games in uh, the Netherlands when he was playing in the Dutch league, but came as a defensive midfield player, but has proved very adequate in a back three. It's a new one for him, though, being out at right back. He's played defensive midfielder, centre back, and centre midfield, but uh, not seen him so far being a uh, full back. No, that's adding to his uh, armory. What's going to be fascinating to see is will those front three stay on for all or most of the match? I wonder, Messi, Neymar, and Mbappe, because it's a long journey back to Paris. Martinez, a little bit overcooked, maybe. It was kept in by Abdul Hamid, who's playing on the right. Well, we did see the likes of uh, Neymar and uh, Mbappe and uh, Akraf Hakimi rested. And as you see, they've almost got a magnificent save by Navas. That really is. The ball is it's a perfect header. Down at the ground, Navas having to get low really quickly and does the job beautifully. Just getting a hand on it, but keeping it out, because it was uh, a header with a bit of pace on it. So... Superb work from Kayla Navas, who, as we said earlier, has played very little football this season, just in the cup. So, not easy to come in and uh, pull off a save like that. Exactly what he did. Ruiz, Ramos. This is going to be very competitive. Second 45 minutes. There's no extra time. We'll go to Pence. Neymar, brought down by Abdul Hamid, who's switched flanks. Yeah. Yeah, no doubt that was a free kick. Got him twice. There did uh, Saeed Abdelhamid. Mbappe. Neymar. I wonder if uh, Abdelhamid's come to this side to face this man, Mbappe. Mbappe tries his luck, and that's a good save from Alois. That signature cut inside and shot not far at all. Well, you've got to show him down the line, haven't you, really? But uh, Abdelhamid there just anticipating the run down the flank and it allowed Mbappe to step back in and uh, good goalkeeping keeps him out I was going to say actually earlier that uh, I would suspect maybe at the weekend or uh, that we'll well we'll come back to that they've taken the short corner <laughs> it's everything's going so quickly you cannot take your eyes off it Hakimi Vitinha the sub went to the World Cup for Portugal Hakimi Neymar. Mbappe up against Abdul Hamid. I think it's going to be a big battle in the second half. And well, there's only one winner there. Mbappe, still Mbappe. Killing Mbappe. 3 oh. 2. Brilliant work from Mbappe and Sergio Ramos. A warrior enjoyed that. And we are back to a PSG lead. It was brilliant work from Mbappe. And Ramos, the tap-in, showing a centre-forward's instinct. 3-2. Well, Warrior turned poacher. Sergio Ramos, that's both uh, centre-backs then on the score sheet. And we were saying how uh, Abdul Hamid should have showed him down the line. Well, he did it here. He was terrified of him coming back inside. So Mbappe said, OK, I'll cut back either way. I'll keep on going to the byline. Perfect ball in. And, well, Mbappe himself would have been very proud of that anticipation by uh, Sergio Ramos to put that ball in the back of the net. It's a lovely goal scored by uh, Paris Saint-Germain. Bernie Wood, and he's worked on that left foot, killing Mbappe, and very dangerous from that kind of position. Whatever the situation, Sergio Ramos is the ultimate competitor, and they'll be delighted to get the third.
looked like an easy tap in, but it was a good instinct. And uh, his former teammate Ronaldo, no doubt, say, look, you've got to keep aware. That's uh, a player like that is able to score three, two. Plenty of time for more goals. Well, Sergio Ramos has not scored in competitive action this season. It's a lovely ball. That's a foul off from uh, Hakimi. Aldasawi showing his class on that uh, far side. It was a great first touch which allowed him to take on the Moroccan international fullback who uh, just didn't get out of the way. Not that he should have to get out of the way, but he stepped into his man and Aldasawi happy to take the free kick. And that expression from uh, Ronaldo suggests that uh, he feels this. Pity Martinez is uh, standing alongside the Portuguese. One metre ninety Talisker. He's an imposing presence. If Ronaldo might go for a crack himself. A hat trick in the first hour. Wouldn't put it past him. Ronaldo tries exactly that. So Ramos clears his lines. You hit one or two black shirts. PSG have something to defend with ten men, but maybe the best form of defence is attack. Oh. Nicely done. <laughs> Gustavo <laughs> and Ramos diving in. Got the ball. Lovely from Martinez. Ramos uh, gets the former Marseille man back to his feet quickly. Look at this from Martinez. That's lovely. Real awareness of what was going on around him. And even tried to get the free kick out the back of it. Yeah, super play. He won the uh, Copa Libertadores twice uh, with River Plate. The former Argentine international. Comes a corner and it's 3-3. The goals just keep coming, and it's Jang, the uh, Korean centre-back. He just threw himself at the ball, and Ronaldo-like, it was a super header. It's another goal. It's three all in Riyadh, and one of the more unlikely goal scorers of the evening. Jang, it's three all. Well, just one goal for him uh, in uh, the league this season. It's a great ball in. Perfect near post run from the Korean. Got in front of his marker. That was the key to this. Little push from Ramos wasn't enough to put him off. Navas, no chance whatsoever from that kind of proximity. Good strength and uh, Paris Saint-Germain here continue to be given a game. Just checking that that indeed will be given. Val will have a look at it and uh, a good header from Jang. As you say, use the pace of uh, the corner just to guide it in. And we are back at three each. What a game we've had. In the second half, uh, Martinez has showed what a good player he is on the flanks for the Riyadh season team. PSG playing with 10, remember? They brought on Vitinha. And Danilo for some fresh legs. Killing Mbappe. Finds Neymar. I was asking whether the front three would stay on. Yeah, done exactly that. Here is Messi. Vitinha. So Sanchez off at a half time. Messi. Neymar doesn't have much state. space, doesn't need too much. Messi! What well, was that a handball? Messi thought so. And I think a penalty's been given. Abdul Rahman Al Jassim for the third time tonight has awarded a penalty for that handball. Well, it was very close, wasn't it? Albalay. Well, the trouble is for Albalay there is he's moving his hand down towards the ball, even though it was very close to him. He's protesting that he couldn't get out of the way. But, uh, well, of those that uh, are that kind of penalty, you can see why the referee decided that one merited a spot kick. Albalay gets a yellow for his trouble. Now it's going to be a change of penalty takers. <laughs> That's quite a nice scene, isn't it? Uh, the referee. Just uh, looking to calm down 
the uh, centre back. There's no language problems, Qatari and uh, Saudi. She's explaining, look, it's a penalty. That's the reason. I think he's also saying that the VAR have checked it as well. Yeah. Mm. You're absolutely right to point that out. VAR, VAR will check that. And if there's a, a change or a, a reasonable call to be made, he'll have another look at that. But I think VAR is quite happy with it. We do see those given these days. And after one hour of play, chance for maybe goal number seven. Kylian Mbappe knows all about scoring penalties in this part of the world. Listen to the atmosphere compared to the first penalty that was given. Mbappe does the job. Alois beaten. There's another goal. 4-3 with one hour on the clock. And yet again, PSG have the lead. Ronaldo disappointed. But in that particular battle, there was only going to be one winner. Kylian Mbappe. Well, he missed the penalty earlier in the season against Montpellier, but uh, has been back on target since then. No doubts there. And a quick look at the goalkeeper. Just decided where he was going to put it. And unlike the previous uh, penalty, Al Awas seemed to guess early. Ligue 1's top scorer. Well, he just can't stop scoring, can he, as uh, more substitutions arrive. Matthias Pereira, the uh, Brazilian, coming on, as is uh, Andre Correo, the uh, Peruvian player. And also Mohamed Cano as well, so a whole uh, clutch of subs. Off goes Ronaldo. What would you make of his performance? I don't think he could have done much more, to be quite honest with you, in this game. It's a wonderful introduction to Saudi Arabian football. He's getting a standing ovation. It's not quite gone the way he wanted to in recent months. But uh, a new life opening up for him here in Saudi Arabia. Two goals, one of them a penalty, and some all-round respect from his new teammates and uh, support staff. They'll be looking forward to him uh, getting down to business in the uh, Saudi Arabian Professional League. Yeah, his first competitive appearance on Sunday when Al Nasser hosts Al Etifak. That won't be at this stadium, that will be at their normal stadium the uh, university stadium and off goes Neymar I think Messi's going to stay on for a bit longer Hugo, Hugo. Ekitike is going to come on Ekitike on Kylian Mbappe is coming off I think it is I'll see some of the youngsters and PSG have a brilliant clutch of youngsters coming through Donnarumma coming on between the posts as well Great ovation for Mbappe as well. Well, I'm not 100% convinced that uh, Neymar, Messi and Mbappe will probably start the uh, cup match on Monday. I think it's important that they uh, rest them. It's a nice moment between uh, Gallardo and fellow Argentine Lionel Messi. Gallardo able to deliver his personal congratulations for that lifelong achievement. He wasn't even born when uh, Diego Maradona lifted the World Cup in 1986. So they've had uh, one hour of play, that front three. Now it's up to uh, Ugo Ekatike to lead the line. He's been a good scoring form of late as well as Ugo Ekatike. He has, yeah, scored against uh, Chateau against Angers. And against Lens as well. So um, in good form, the number 44. He actually asked to wear the 44 because, like his name, it's a palindrome, meaning it's the same backwards. If you're wondering why he's got the number 44 and... Look out for the number 33, talking of palindromes. Warren Zaire Emery, 16 years old, made his full debut at the weekend. Yes, you heard it right, 16 years old, playing for PSG. So it's 4-3, in case you lost count. Also on the pitch is uh, Ilyas Husni. Number 37, another youngster, 17 years old, hasn't played so far in the league. And there's that all-star bench, Hakimi off as well. So plenty of changes, as we expected. Look out for Husni, he's another really good young player coming through. It's very difficult for these youngsters to break through into the first team. Yeah, he's sat on the bench four times, hasn't he, so far in his league and career? And uh, it'll... Uh... 
little bit of a chance here. He's going to have, you know, almost half an hour to impress. And uh, Garby is on as well, in case you didn't see it. Uh, He's a lovely player. I like yeah. him. Really impressed me when I've been commentating the Paris Saint-Germain youth team or the uh, the under-20s. I think he's got a very bright future. Another Paris lad playing for his team today. It's a different kind of experience this. He's uh, probably not played in front of so many fans, exhibition or not. Here's uh, Lajami. Lajami does well. Pembele is another sub, incidentally, playing at right back, coming thick and fast. Yeah, back from his loan to Bordeaux. Trying to uh, force his way into uh, a defensive structure that has uh, Sergio Ramos and uh, Marquinhos, of course, as number one. Speaking of which, lovely move by Aldersawi. Comes Cano, the sub. A lot of new players coming into what's been a, quite a frenetic match so far, so not easy for them. That far foul against Pembele, indeed it was. Absolutely right to say uh, a lot of competition to come into this defence, but with these injuries, Pembele might play, you know, this week in the cup against the uh, Pay de Cassel, which is a small village team up in the north. There's Telesca the sub. Defending for PSG, Danilo hits it wide. Talisca drives goalwards and Donnarumma holds on. Yeah, but there was a real slide in there by El Balai. He might have got something on this. Donnarumma would have been uh, a little bit of sixes and sevens if he had, but he kept his eye on the ball, right into his arms. A whole clutch of teenagers on. Husni among them. Let's see uh, how they can do against this Riyadh season team. Zaya Emery as well. It's interesting to see how that youngster develops. Kind of the youngest player ever to play a competitive match for PSG earlier this season he did start at the weekend in a very difficult match too against Rent. I saw him at the beginning of the campaign when they were doing their Japan tour and uh, he came on and played alongside Amako Verratti and looked absolutely at home. Here's Carrillo, the player I was mentioning. Peru. Bit of a lull after all those substitutes which is understandable team of players hanging loose to each other again. Gustavo Alta Del, Del Sari. It's interesting, the players know each other, but often as uh, rivals, of course, great rivals, are uh, Al-Halal and al Nasser, the two uh, big Riyadh clubs. Four, three to PSG, Messi, Marquinhos, Ramos, and that's a Mbappe penalty right on the hour. Christophe Galtier has had a match to coach today. He's had to uh, use all that knowledge of his with these two players going off, but dealing with the fact that they are playing at 10, easy to forget, but Bernat seeing red, that wouldn't have been in his planning. So the goal scorer, Jang. It's not been obvious, though, has it, that Paris Saint-Germain have had a man fewer on the pitch. It's looked very even. It has, and they've got some young, fresh legs on, the likes of uh, Husni and Ekatike. Zaya Emery. Although, ironically, this will be the test for them, isn't it? Because now they have ten men with less experienced players on there. Yep. Defending to do here, held by Donnarumma. Made himself the number one this season as uh, Donnarumma after sharing responsibilities with Kaylor Navas last season. Slightly loose ball from Hugo Ekatike. Ah, oh, it's nicely done. El Shaddai uh, Bichiabu there showing what for the how comfortable he is as well. 
Another of the new players coming through in the Paris Saint-Germain Academy. Yep, a towering centre-back. It's a really skillful player as well. Vitinha. Pembele. Osnina, here's a chance for Ekatike. Oh. Taken off his toe by uh, Zhang. Good work from Zhang, it was. So it's uh, Danilo and uh, Bichiabu, the uh, two centre-backs now. Ramos has gone off. And uh, with uh, Marquinhos off, it's uh, Danilo wearing the captain's armband. Oh, hello. Try hello. from distance. <laughs> <laughs> Good awareness from uh, El Oais. Beaten there by Vitinha from, certainly from distance, you can say that again. Vitinha, I mean, he's been a wonderful signing by uh, Paris Saint-Germain. Fitted in absolutely from the start. Marquinhos was talking about him and how impressed they've been since he came in. He, can, he really does add to the midfield. Great Tangent spot. Pass through the ball and uh, him and Verratti, Verratinia, some fans call them, uh, link up really well. Knocked across and just taken off the toe of Vekatike. That was Vettinia's shot. Comes Garby again. This is uh, Husni. He's a wonderful player. He's a real goal scorer for the under 20s. And uh, really links up well with Garby. Yeah, they've um, come through that uh, academy, haven't they? So they know each other well. Ekatike. Zaya Emery sits in front of that back four with great effect. Vitinha. I can see Zaya Emery being one of those players that will come through the academy and will stick as we go on with Paris Saint-Germain's future. Wonderful sense of uh, composure on the ball, which, bearing in mind that uh, he's still only 16 years old, is, is quite phenomenal. Yeah, that's the word that so many players use. Him. He's so composed. At uh, 15, you know, he was training with the first team. He's, uh, he just gets it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's it. He's just got that football knowledge. Born in uh, Montreuil, just to the east of Paris. So, local boy. Let's see what the Riyadh team can do from this. The shots from Taliska, held by Donnarumma. Yeah, there's a deflection on the way through. It's got intent, hasn't he? Danilo there just managed to get something on it, which made it a easier catch for the Italian Euro winner. With Euro winners, Bichiabu was an under-17 Euro winner, so he's won some silverware, along with this man, Zaya Emery. Loses out. Gustavo, maybe the chance here for the Riyadh team, but Vitinha in the right place at the right time. Pembele telling Husni to get forward. Yeah. Oh, Pembele did really well there, giving Husni some uh, space to run into. Husni gets it across. PSG's lead is just one goal at the moment. And, uh, tonight, it's not uh, a big lead. Ali Lajami there, clearing up. Luis Gustavo. It's near side. And Abdul Hamid, he's had a busy 73 minutes, hasn't he? Both ends of the pitch, Abdul Hamid. He's always going to be worried about the threat of Mbappe. Now he can uh, put that to one side. There's no Mbappe on the pitch, and he can be a little bit more of an attacking right back. Yeah, it's going to be different now that you don't have the uh, the holy trinity on the pitch. Pereira. Abdul Hamid goes first time. Rather miscued that, but might come off yet. No. Husni. Gets his head down and plays. Or Zaya Emery. All action player, isn't he? <laughs> Sneeze sort of player that fans like, but they might not like that. Losing the ball. Chance here for the host, and it's wide from uh, Andre Carrillo. 
the Peruvian just to hook that round the far post. Well, it was a nice move, but Husni got introduced to Luis Gustavo, and uh, you can't do things like that with the former Wolfsburg man. And it directly resulted in this chance. And I think Carrillo will be a little bit upset that he didn't do better. Donnarumma standing big, standing tall, not committing. Making him make the decision and uh, Martino upset, frustrated. Ronaldo off. Eventful match while he was on a penalty and then a good goal. So whacked in the face. Even off the pitch he's getting a cheer. Yeah, from the home crowd. Seeing him on the big screen. As Bettinia looks to open things up. Pembele initially looking for the run. Well, the game has definitely slowed up. Yeah. There's no doubt about that. Which will suit uh, Paris Saint-Germain just fine as they're leading. And with those front three off, it's inevitably a bit slower up front and uh, a little bit easier for the Saudi defenders, or what should I say, the... Uh, the Riyadh season team. They're not all Saudi. Jang is a Korean, of course. Transfer window is uh, open. We can uh, say that Pablo Sarabia, the uh, PSG attacking midfield player, has gone to Wolverhampton in England. We wish him uh, the very best of luck in the English Midlands. His former team have some defending to do. Taliska. It's inside, Taliska wants it back. Comes out to Abdul Hamid. Goal kick. That was a nice move, but uh, Saeed Abdul Hamid just unable to uh, wrap his right foot around that for the cross. That's Al Khalafi, certainly uh, enjoying his day in Riyadh. Enjoying it even more if uh, PSG end up winners. Who's going to have bragging rights by the end? That's going to be the thing, isn't it? Certainly uh, a lot of bonami going on there in the VITP box. Garby driving forward. Taking his eye off the ball. Taliska. Basari. Your chance here. It's deflected and over. Good work from uh, Warren Zaire Emery. He's throwing himself at the ball. The uh, Aldasari shot. Yeah, great work down that left hand side by Matias Pereira. Got the ball inside, but uh, Zay Emery closed down the space very quickly and made Aldasari just take the shot perhaps slightly quicker than he wanted to. Has, though, resulted in a corner, so uh, the attack continues and Paris Saint Germain need to stay focused. Indeed, in comes the corner. Out by Zay Emery. Was Gustavo, probably the most experienced player on the pitch now at the top level. To the arms of the giant keeper, Donnarumma. Yeah, you're going to have to work harder than that if you're going to beat a, a man in the air that's 1m96. Talking of tall players, here's Ekatike. Ekatike is through. A chance for Ugo Ekatike. Oh, that's a brilliant finish. What well, Mbappe, Neymar and Messi may be off, but Ugo Ekatike is on. And that was a finish that those two players will be proud of. It's PSG 5, Riyadh Season 3. Well, he's been in really good form of late. So you can see how far the uh, host team have pushed up. It was one-on-one. Ekitike uses his pace. And that's a really great finish from a man who's bang on form recently. Four goals now in his last five games. And he's a man who's growing in confidence. Ten goals for Rans last season. And he's already showing that he deserves his place in the Paris Saint-Germain lineup, even if for the most part he's on the bench. Every time he's called on, he does the business and gaining appreciation from his superstar teammates. Hugo Ekatike making it five. He does have such an important role this season because there's no way that front three are going to play every minute of every match and they need to keep the quality up. They need a, maybe a different option. Ekatike perhaps gives a little bit more of an aerial option. But you can see there he's got the speed and he's got the finishing power. Of that, there's no doubt. And that was a top-class finish. Yeah, well, remember the teasing he got when he finally managed to get his first goal in the 5-0 win against Auxerre. He was uh, very, very relieved, and uh, all his teammates let him know it. He'd been carrying it a bit like an albatross 
It was a great relief when he got that. And once that first goal had gone in, then suddenly he can relax. He's not stopped scoring since then. So uh, congratulations to him. He's going to be an important player from now to the end of the season. You can be sure of that. Ugo Ekatike, a youngster with a great future. And already we can see a player with a great shot. A little bit shell-shocked after that of the uh, Saudi team. It should be it, really. Two goals up, 5-3. As you said, though, is that obvious evidence that PSG are playing with 10. They're doing really well. Going to go out for a corner. Matias Pereira, the Brazilian, swings in the corner. Ten minutes to play in what's been a really entertaining match. Riyadh season team three, PSG five. Missed penalty, and we've had a red card. Ekatike doing well. A little bit unlucky there. A foul. The yeah, smiling Abdul Rahman Al Jassim. It's not had an easy game today. Foul on Abdul Hamid. I think he's been loving it. <laughs> to be honest, the, goal, the, uh, the referee. Well, he's had a smile on his uh, face the whole time, which is good to see. And Bailey has some defending to do at that far side. I think a lot of these players will be playing PSG's next match against Pedro Gasell, you know. Because uh, it's going to be different circumstances. It will be at the Stade Felix Bollard, which is a great theatre of French football. But it will be newish fans to that stadium I would say there might be a few Lons fans supporting their local village team about uh, 40 kilometers from Lons is uh, the village of Cassel it's not much more than a village the life of a professional footballer curious from uh, the Saudi capital in this huge stadium to playing a village team the week after Luis Gustavo seen it all in football at Hoffenheim Bayern Marseille I think he'll play the full 90. Two goals, the difference. Jang, the pace. But, uh, Bichiabu is a powerful, a very skillful player at centre-back. Look out for uh, Bichiabu in the years to come. Still only 17 years old. You have to really blink when you see the ages of these players, especially Bichiabu, because he's a... Uh, Powerful presence. Old man in this type of team. Yeah, 17. <laughs> All of 17 years old. Timothy Pembele. Garby. The clever ball through. Well, I'll just are we tracking back now to help out the defenders. They're maybe getting a little bit uh, frustrated up front. Paris Saint-Germain beginning to close the, uh, the game down. With only eight minutes left. You can feel that the uh, the atmosphere has been sucked out the top of the uh, King Fahd International Stadium as well. Yeah, it's good to see Garby on another Paris-born player, you know. Been to the 60s at Paris FC, which is the other team in uh, Paris. They're currently in the second division. They yeah, have their home down in the south on the periphery. Nearly got promoted last year, more mid-table this season. Paris Saint-Germain have some uh, defending to do here to keep this two-goal lead. Bettinia, is it a foul? Yes, says our referee against Anderson Talisca. Yeah, Talisca has been uh, creating trouble ever since he came on. Clearly a foul. Talisca saw it coming, rode it. I think that if the, I think uh, I think, sorry, I think that um, Vettinia is going to feel that more than uh, Talisker, <laughs> yeah. to be quite honest with you. It's the feeling that if Rio do want to get back into this match now might be the time, because uh, as Angus was saying, they're a little bit flat at the moment, needing a bit of inspiration. If there's one man they can give it to them, it's Anderson Talisker. Former. Fika man. See the relative sizes there. Bichiabu, a <laughs> giant presence. A 
Talisca, Ronaldo like, will take his time and put it over. Well, he hit it well, just in the wrong direction. Not too far away, but just couldn't get the zip back down over the top of the wall. No surprise that uh, he tried to go over Nuno Mendes. It's good to see him back on the pitch. Indeed, he wasn't expected to play today, but uh, as you see, he is there. There's a couple of changes. Abdullah Otaf coming on, as is uh, Sami al Najai. And it's the end of Luis Gustavo. I was wrong when I predicted he'd last the 90. He's put in a really good effort today as the Brazilian. He can be proud of his performance. Samuel Najai is one of those men who uh, played in the World Cup, but uh, only once. Abdullah Vitinho off. Sorry, Abdullah Haf is also coming on and uh, he's another Vitinho. I forget. He's only just come on, hasn't yep, he? he came on. So, uh, blows come on at half time I hope he's all right yes uh, it's going to be a worry isn't it for PSG fans they don't want to pick up any injuries here Aldasawi comes off the superstar for uh, the Saudi Arabian hosts didn't see him on target today so five minutes for PSG to hold out Nuno Mendes going to see him back from that injury sustained at the World Cup Zaya Emery, well, kept on to that 16 year old. Bitchy Abu, one year his senior, shows what a good footballer he is. Brilliant ball. Ekatike nearly came through to Garbi. It's Husni, excuse me. Garbi made the run to the other side. Husni, not far off from uh, getting a one on one against Al Oais. A bit of a, a lull in the atmosphere. Maybe some of the fans thinking, well, that's that. They came back so many times. Mataffi there just getting a little bit uh, frustrated. He's only just come on. He was part of the squad that went to the World Cup but didn't actually play. And so didn't get to uh, be on the pitch when uh, they beat this man's team. Argentina. Lionel Messi opened the scoring 83 minutes ago. Seems like a long time ago. So much has happened since then. Well, the cries of Messi around the stadium because uh, his face was on the big screen and well, every fan here appreciating not just the new Saudi acquisition, Ronaldo, but the great Messi as well. They do love their football in this part of the world. Husni, Pembele wants it. Carry is on as well, another youngster. In the number 36 shirt for these final minutes and the youngsters angus have done pretty well you know they've kept a lid on uh, a potential comeback and it looks like they're gonna get the team over the line yeah promoted from the under 19 team uh, this season young carry mendez thwarted is there gonna be a late sting in the tail of this match i wonder action packed as you can see from the score eight goals this penalty red card Pereiro, Pereiro, excuse me, just about clearing. His knee again. Yeah, Danilo needed two bites of the cherry to get rid of that. There will be a trophy awarded at the end of the match. Stay for that moment. Unless uh, some late fireworks, it's going to go to Paris Saint-Germain. Telisca again hasn't really managed to change the course of the match. Abdul Hamid. Into the danger area, I say that, oh. and Taliska's head up went the wrong way. Why did he not go for goal? Tried to head it back towards the six-yard area where there was no teammate. Neymar's turn to get some appreciation. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't actually know that uh, the camera was aiming at him to start with. <laughs> He'll get even more now. And Marquinhos will get a few as well. Give Marquinhos some love too. Yeah. Captain's captain, he's a great professional, Marquinhos, and it looks like PSG have a winning smile. Uh, moving into the last minute, Ashraf Hakimi, for the reasons I said earlier, it's usually popular. And Kylian Mbappe, a little wave to the fans as well. There might be a sixth, a Katike. 
And one more, make it a tennis score. Six three. One minute to go. Plus whatever Abdul Rahman Al Jassim decides uh, is necessary for injury time. Really had too many injuries in the second half. Plenty of subs. Taliska's one of them. So, transfer Carrillo and over. Just more frustration for the Riyadh season team. Well, some great play there from uh, Taliska. Trying to set the ball up for himself, realised it was not going to be on, and so found his teammate. Perhaps that should be in the back of the net. Carrillo there just leant back a little bit too much, and the ball went up instead of along. Rather for Pereira. Pereira, excuse me. Yeah, with that final shot, they were and with that blonde hair, should have known better. Trying to get a perfect goal, didn't quite come off. And I think that will be that. Let's see uh, how much injury time there will be. But PSG with ten men, remember, since five minutes before the first half ended. A good display from then. Taliska, Zaya Emery gets a foot in, and another one. He'll chase down everything. He's a really good athlete as well. Sixteen years old. Abdul Hamid, he's been on since the start. Carrillo with the cross. Oof. The strike miscued. But the danger not over. And, uh, the Too diving close. giant keeper. Yeah. Donnarumma. And uh, I think it's going to get the biggest cheer of all. The new Al Nasser player, Cristiano Ronaldo. Well, from the Al Nasser part of the crowd, at least. <laughs> we are deep into injury time. It's PSG 5, Riyadh season team 3. Looks like that's the end of the goals. We've had eight of them. And some real corkers in there as well. Screams of Ronaldo. And they're going to enjoy seeing Ronaldo in an Al Nasser shirt for the rest of the season. And as you say, Al Nasser fans will be hoping he keeps them top. Yeah, I'm not sure it'd be so popular the next time Al Nasser go up against Al Hilal. Yeah. They play each other once a season. 2-2 two -two draw. Pereira. PSG happy to sit back and defend this 5-3 lead to the second minute of stoppage time. Carrillo. Talisker again. Super ball to the far side. And Bailey will have some defending to do. Does it pretty well. It's a question of keeping the men in sky blue out. Talisca came off his heel with the shot. <laughs> it was from Andre Carrillo. Only just over. Four minutes we have of injury time, I can confirm. Yeah, a former Watford man is uh, Carrillo. And uh, he hit this really well. And uh, it almost looked like there was a touch there from Donnarumma. I thought it might have been, but uh, not according to the officials. It was very well hit off the half volley, wasn't it? So he scored once uh, for uh, Al Hilal this season as uh, Andre Carrillo, the Peruvian. And that's the top scorers with 27 goals from 13. And uh, no doubt Ronaldo will add one or two to those. Mm. He doesn't score a lot of goals, let's be honest. The team. But uh, mm. Ronaldo here, not just to boost the Saudi league, but to help Al Nasser win titles. Will end the hegemony of Al Halal will be a start, wouldn't it? Yep. Messi and Ronaldo have met again. This is the 36th time they've met. Messi. On 16 of those so far. Looks like it'll be 17 under rather different circumstances than we've seen in the past. But this has been a really competitive match in Riyadh. And PSG surely now will go away with the win. They've got a bit more defending to do. I think everybody wins out of this, to be quite honest with you. It's been a good test for Paris Saint-Germain. But uh, I think that uh, a lot of people thought that probably Paris Saint-Germain would run away with it. And that's not quite been the case. Now the fans will definitely have enjoyed this. And we've seen that. Maybe one last goal, I wonder. Makes you wonder, though, what the score would have been had they had 11 on the pitch for <laughs> the whole 90. Carrillo. So it's a Cano. Oh! Oh, and there is a late goal. Would you believe it? We have a ninth goal. Not too many celebrations, but it's been given. Ronaldo thinks that maybe there is. But it is the giant striker, Anderson Talisca. He miscued one a few minutes ago. He didn't miscue that. That was a brilliant finish. Well, he's deserved that because he's been a threat ever since he came on in the second half. 
And Donnarumma might be almost two metres tall, but that arced away from him into the corner. It's a splendid hit. Really is. Real quality. And he deserves that for the uh, work that he has put in. He's really put himself in the window, if you like, of world Certainly football. Has. Yeah, because this is being watched around the world. And is it over? It certainly is. We've had a wonderful game with nine goals. Some of the superstars of world football here, including Cristiano Ronaldo, who's ended up on the losing team and probably with a black eye in the morning. But we've had a wonderful game of football and a smile from Ronaldo. Messi on the winning side and a scorer. This one has finished the Riyadh season team four, PSG five. So the youngsters from PSG, they would have enjoyed this as well. Playing uh, alongside some of the greats. Neymar there as well, and Mr. Penalty, your summary of the match. Well, it lived up to the anticipation. All of the big guns scored, and Neymar, well, Neymar didn't actually, he missed the penalty, but Messi scored, and Mbappe scored, Cristiano Ronaldo introduced himself to Saudi Arabian football with two goals, and 5-4 uh, is probably a fair reflection in the end. Indeed, a one-goal margin after a great night of entertainment. 5-4 for Paris. I think the best thing to come out of that game is the fact that it was competitive. And I think it was competitive even when it was 11 against 11. The game didn't need to have one burnout sent off to make it competitive. It was already that. And Kalon Navas had plenty to do when he started. And uh, I think he... Uh, he did really well. He doesn't play that often. It was his only second, well, I say second, he's had one competitive outing so far this season. And uh, he put in a good performance and, uh, and needed to. I think that uh, Paris Saint-Germain can say that this was not a wasted trip. They uh, certainly came out. They took it seriously. Messi, Neymar and Mbappe all played as we know they can together. The crowd certainly brought an awful lot of atmosphere to the game. It certainly felt like more than a friendly. It was a, uh, a good game of football all around, taken seriously by both sides. And I'm glad that it doesn't... I'm not hope there's no injuries. Vettinia coming off was a little bit of a concern, but hopefully he's OK because uh, they'll need him as we head into the business end of the season with the Champions League. Of course, the Coupe de France is going to get harder. You can't anticipate that they're going to get beaten on Monday. Um, but uh, they will have bigger games coming. There'll be more and more. And, of course, with this World Cup year, we have had more games during midweek than we've had normally when domestic action has been on. So I think it's important that the whole team plays. The youngsters came on and uh, got a bit of action. It wasn't, like I said, it's not... It's not like they've come on against lower, inferior opposition. They came up against teams, uh, two teams who are at the top of their league and who uh, are full of stars that were so good for Saudi Arabia in the World Cup. So I think that all around, this has been a very, very good, worthwhile trip. Messi and Neymar played around the world together. And this is another chapter in their career. And uh, Gallardo and Messi, as well as Neymar, a bit of love between the Brazilians. Brazilian, rather, and Argentines as we get ready for the uh, trophy award. The lights are down. Taylor Navas having a chat with uh, his old teammate, Cristiano Ronaldo. It's a great opportunity for some old friends to meet up again. Hakimi and Mbappe. New friends, you could say, but certainly getting on great. Had a quick holiday in New York recently. As Lionel Messi and Marcelo Gallardo have a, a word about today's game, which has ended Riyadh 4, PSG 5. And as we were saying, both teams can get a lot out of this. Some great experience for the youngsters like Garbi, Husni, Zaya Emery, Bichiabu. While for the Saudi players and the Saudi base players they can say they've played against some of the best all-time greats and also meeting uh, new teammates in Ronaldo of course he'll be playing alongside the likes of uh, Abdullah Maddo and Abdullah Al-Amri 
Sami El Najai, Gonzalo's Martinez, uh, Anderson, Taliska. They're all on his side of the uh, city, so to speak. Three ex Real Madrid players. Fascinating to know what they're having a chat about. Life in Riyadh, maybe. So, just to run you through, PSG opening the scoring with that messy goal. Ronaldo showing that he can still take a penalty, equalising just after the half hour mark. Marquinhos making it 2-1. Then Ronaldo scoring from the uh, penalty spot after getting an unintentional whack from Navas. So it was 2-2 two -two at the break. And then in the second half, the goals kept raining in. Sergio Ramos with a cute finish. Jang making it three apiece. Uh, penalty from Mbappe. Super goal from Ekutike right at the death. Taliska. There you have it. Nine goals. And the red card in there just before half time for one Bernats. 5 4 for Paris. And I wonder if he can quite believe what has happened. When you we saw Messi's face at the end of that defeat against Saudi Arabia. And you would have told him, don't worry, you're going to win the World Cup. I wonder whether he would have actually believed you, because he looked absolutely crestfallen. So let's uh, sit back and enjoy the player awards for this match. Riyadh against PSG. <laughs> it's almost surprised that he's been uh, called as man of the match, but two goals in the game. Black eye to boot. Thanks to Kaylor Navas, his uh, former Real Madrid teammate. Well, he certainly showed his quality today. There's no doubt about that. But uh, there's no doubt about it that he came up against uh, an all-round better team and a team that's used to playing to each other as well. Don't forget that this is a makeshift team that uh, Cristiano Ronaldo was part of today. It would have been a big surprise if they had managed to get the better of a team that uh, plays together every week. Because Twice a week. Uh, kicked a ball in anger since uh, mid-December playing for Portugal. And even during the World Cup, he certainly wasn't uh, a player that Portugal relied on in those last few games. We will move on. Focus on uh, Lionel Messi for the moment. He's going to pick up a ward, perhaps. Certainly he's going to pick up the trophy as it's being brought into the uh, centre of the pitch. Getting used to that now, again. After the ending the 28-year wait for a Copa America, the 36-year wait for a World Cup, both first in his career. It's been quite a, uh, not quite the, the the twilight to his career, but you know, there's probably not another World Cup in him, even though uh, his national coach Galoni thinks there might be. He hasn't officially retired Messi, but at 35, he said before that it would be a, a fitting way to end his career. But look, that's up to him. Might play some more games for Argentina. But uh, for the moment, he's going to sit back and enjoy winning this uh, Riyadh Season Cup. It's a glittering stadium in the capital of Saudi Arabia. Lovely re replica of a kind of Bedouin tent. Yeah, which but was, with uh, uh, thousands of people in it. We saw some of that in Qatar. Remember, Saudi is uh, more than interested in hosting the 2030 FIFA World Cup. Santanello is uh, talking to Musa Marega, the Al Halal uh, right winger, Mali international. Yeah, he played uh, in Portugal for many years, successfully at uh, Porto. Marega. So uh, no language problems there. He was very successful at Porto. A couple of spells at other clubs as well, but he's best remembered for that spell with uh, Portuguese giants. A bit of Portuguese going down there. I always find the language interesting. No well, doubt that's the, the language of those four. Well, both of them form a Porto as well. Yeah, Not just one, but the other two. Quite a linguist is Ronaldo. Speaks perfect Spanish and English. 
Italian isn't bad either. Maybe he'll pick up a bit of uh, Arabic while he's here. It's getting the stage together then for the trophy presentation and it's going to be PSG picking up the Riyadh Season Awards. There's the reception committee in place. Quite a large trophy it is too as well. It is. By, the, by this angle, let's uh, have a look. Yeah, it's going to be uh, quite uh, heavy for, uh, I guess, Marquinhos to pick up in a few minutes. Might need two of them. Yep. Well, Paris Saint-Germain, they picked up the Super Cup at the beginning of the uh, season. The uh, French Trophée de Champion. This is another trophy that's coming their way. They'll be hoping that there is uh, maybe a Champions League one coming at the end of the season. And indeed another Ligue 1 trophy too. As they look to set the all-time record for Ligue 1 trophies. At the moment, they're equal with Saint-Étienne. One more will make them absolutely the top record holders. So we're going to start with the uh, officials. Abdul Rahman Al Jassim had a busy uh, 90 minutes out there. Anyone thought he might just be going through the motions? Think again. It was a very, very busy afternoon for Abdel Rahman Al Jassim, the Qatari official. Going to sign the ball. There's uh, no more important person on the pitch than the referee, so why not? Looks like there's going to be quite a lot of uh, signing of various footballs over the next few minutes and no doubt the PSG players will be much uh, solicited for that as well. Well, thanks for PSG. Well, they will uh, take an overnight flight back to Paris after this match, have a day off and then prepare for first their match against the Pays de Cassel, the amateur team they play in the French Cup. And then they have uh, probably a harder game, but a very important one home to Reims after that, who are in superb form as they look to retain the league and title. First up, it's going to be the Riyadh season team, led, of course, by Cristiano, Cristiano Ronaldo. You would surely think that Hugo Ekatike is going to start that game against Ram, surely. Here he is. Well, you can see that he's trying to smile, but don't forget he lost this game, so... Uh, despite his own personal performance, he's still a little disappointed. A little chat there with Sami Al Nagai, the uh, one of the uh, Saudi World Cup stars. Get Ronaldo back to action, no doubt tomorrow. Back to work. He's a great competitor in training. First match on Sunday, but now we turn to the winners of this final this competition the Saudi season cup all 22 players getting the medal and the handshake interesting they've all got their uh, their uh, their jackets on and the uh, home side apart from <laughs> Gustavo still just uh, dressed up in the kit <laughs> yeah it's falling below 10 degrees so it's not cold but uh, certainly not warm and no doubt the PSG players have been told well, let's not pick up any chills or anything like that on our trip Marcelo Gallardo, I wonder what the future is for him. He had a superb uh, spell at River. No doubt a few big clubs around Europe will be maybe thinking about Marcelo Gallardo as a, a future coach. The uh, ex-South American coach of the year, three times in fact. Twice winning the Copa Libertadores. 
Not easy for him, coaching players from two rival teams. He's These are the winners. <laughs> I think some of them are a little bit cold. Can some I wear are, something, he says? <laughs> some have got jackets and some haven't, so that's yeah, to, to that. And uh, I'm sure that image of Cristiano Ronaldo with a big bruise will be shared around the world on social media. Let's hope it's okay for the weekend. like Sergio Ramos is going to pick up the trophy as he's been pushed forward. Marquinhos hasn't even moved towards the podium yet. No, I think that uh, Marquinhos is just keeping his powder dry. Well, Ramos is a man used to picking up trophies, isn't he, as captain? Important to get the uh, order right. Medal first, shake hands afterwards. <laughs> oh, Messi gets a hug as well. <laughs> Everybody wants to hug Messi. Successful night in the Saudi capital for Paris Saint Germain. They've got experience for the likes of Zaya Emery, Vichy Abu. Shiabu through Ekitike next on target tonight. And actually, his goal turned out to be the winner. Yep, the uh, fifth of PSG's five tonight. For a one burn, that got sent off. He'll get a medal anyway, quite rightly. Just saw Messi rubbing his hands, getting ready to get his hands on another trophy. And Christophe Galtier. Medal for all the coaching staff. Good day at the office for PSG. And there he is, Marquinhos, right at the end. He has put something on to keep warm. One burnout's already had a shower by the looks of it. We're ready then. It's the trophy being awarded to PSG winning the Riyadh Season Team Cup in the Saudi capital after a spectacular 5-4 victory. New Ramos will get in there originally, eventually. Well, it's a feel-good night on a feel-good trip for uh, Paris Saint-Germain before they get down to domestic and continental business in the next couple of weeks. The fireworks over Riyadh, and we've certainly had fireworks on the pitch today with five goals for PSG and a successful trip to Riyadh. They have won this Cup, Saudi Season Cup, by five goals to four. Messi, Marquinhos, Ramos, Mbappe, and Ekatike, the goal scorers. A very good evening from us all. This one has finished. PSG winning 5-4.